Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and uh, we don't have any pre-rolls, so we just want to tell everybody to go to brilliantidiotsmerch.com yep. and please purchase some Brilliant Idiots merchandise, uh, some t-shirts, some hoodies, some socks, whatever it is you choose. Just go to Brilliant Idiots, brilliantidiotsmerch.com. Salute to high you clothing. Um, also, please pre-order my book, Black Privilege. Opportunity comes to those who create it. It'll be in bookstores April 18th. We less than a month away, baby. So go pre-order at uh, Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Got them. Barnes and Nobles uh, came to their senses. So, you know, we got the Black Privilege book tour. Uh, April 17th, we'll be at the Powerhouse Arena in Brooklyn at 7 p.m. Um, that's moderated by Angela Rye. And then uh, April 18th, we'll be at the Barnes and Nobles, 5th Avenue, New York, 12.30 p.m. for a signing. Now, that is just a signing simply because it's at lunchtime. And plus, I got... You know the other moderated event at the at, at Powerhouse in New York, and I'm doing another one at, at YouTube. So there's no need to do all of that, all those moderated events. But every place else, Barnes and Nobles, is a moderated event. So I'll um, announce more dates. I got a lot of them. We're doing the Grove for everybody in LA who was one, who was who was tweeting. They was tweeting the Grove crazy for whatever reason. Really? Oh, they gave it to the Grove in Union Square. Oh, but good. We'll be at the Grove April 20th in Los Angeles, California, at 6 p.m. And that one is going to be moderated by Carrie Champion Ooh. of. Uh, ESPN Sports Center. That's beautiful. Salute to Fancy Face Carry Champion. So, um, yeah, I got. I'm I'm going on tour really, uh, really heavy for the next couple months. It's money. Kind of get some money trying to pay off this renovation real quick of this apartment. But uh, the Mansplain tour it is coming to uh, this weekend, the 23rd through the 26th. I'll be in Sunnyvale, California, Rooster Teeth Feathers. Um, the next weekend, the 30th. Through April 1st, I'm going to be at West Palm Beach, Florida. Florida, you always ask me to come through. I'm coming through. So I'm going to be at the Improv Comedy Club in West Palm. Be safe out there. I'm trying to, man. Florida, I'm telling you, the Bronx and Florida have the craziest people in the world. I know. We were talking about that. They both of those show. places need to be put in rice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be uh, in Spokane, Washington, this <laughs> April 6th through 8th at the Spokane Comedy Club. I'm going to be back here in New Brunswick, New Jersey, from the 13th to the 15th at the Stress Factory Comedy Club in, um, in uh, New Brunswick. Brunswick. I'm going to do Atlanta, Ohio, Sacramento, San Francisco, Dallas, uh, Connecticut, and back to Fort Worth, Texas, and then West Nyack. You can check my website for those dates, theandrewshows.com. Thank you guys so much for coming out. So a lot great. of money. And also watch on Common Sense Live every Friday at 1130 on MTV2. Mm -hmm. We had, we had Killer Mike on last week. How was that? What was his chain? What was the whole thing about it's his It's some chain? art piece. I can't remember the name of it, but it's some art piece that he always wanted. Uh, he actually wanted the actual statue because it's an art piece based off a statue. Okay. He actually wanted the statue. He couldn't get the statue. He just bought a piece. And uh, he told this great story about how um, he was reading a book or talking to... What's the guy named William Walters, I think his name is? I don't, know. I don't remember his exact name. But uh, the guy That's told him... Braveheart? I don't remember. William the, Wallace? Is it William Wallace? Is he the guy from Braveheart? The guy that no, 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 not the guy played? from Braveheart. It's a book. I mean, I don't know. It's a book written by somebody or somebody he talked to, and the mm -hmm. person basically told him that, you know, in a minute, money's not going to mean anything, right. actual currency, so we all should get a bag of gold. <laughs> so he went and he's been buying gold. Yeah, but why is gold worth anything? I don't know, because I always, I always, thought, I always, thought, always thought the dollar... Was based off. Well, it was backed by gold. But, backed by gold, yeah. But yeah, but then what happened is in like 1970, I think it was three, they removed the gold standard from the dollar, and then the uh, dollar plummeted in price. And then Henry Kissinger went over to Saudi Arabia and said, hey, if you sell all of your oil in uh, U.S. dollars and only sell it in U.S. dollars and with all the profit by U.S. debt securities, we will make sure that you have protection and you will run this region. And that is why we're in the middle of this right now, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe because gold is worth something everywhere. But here's the thing. Everybody goes, oh, go, don't use dollars because dollars aren't worth anything. We just decided dollars worth something. Get gold. We just decide gold is worth no, anything. No, but I'm saying maybe you gold, can't eat gold. Maybe gold is worth something everywhere across the world. But my point is we only it's only worth something because we agree it's worth something. But that's my thing. So if you got U.S. currency, which you know probably isn't going to worth anything, but you can get gold and you can go anywhere in the world and use it as currency, then yeah. that would be the reason to get gold. Yeah, but why don't we just agree that U.S. currency is worth something and then we don't have to carry around fucking gold all day? That's not the way it's set up. 
up, baby. That's like saying, but why do we see standing up? Because we got dicks. Wait, what did <laughs> like, you say? That's like saying, why do we pee standing up? Because we got dicks. Yeah, but we can pee sitting down. It's way more comfortable. You can sit down. Yeah, you get to relax a little bit. Literally, gold carrying gold around all day in a satchel. You know how heavy gold is? Yeah, but guess what? If the American dollar does plummet and that shit ain't worth nothing and it's just yeah. a piece of paper with a bunch of old white men on it, you're going to yeah. be like, God damn, I wish I had that heavy sack of motherfucking gold. So they put gold. Harriet Tubman on that 20. <laughs> Let's go. That, that'll be the, Harriet's that, going to bring the currency listen, back. The way things are going right now, That'll be when the, um, the money absolutely means nothing. nothing. <laughs> It'll plummet right before the end. And this fucking picture. And this fucking that paper with this. U.S. currency this, going underground like the railroad. Come on, man. You got this paper with an old black woman on it. Only person still buying it is fucking people that sell weed illegally because they don't know no better. <laughs> I ain't got time for that shit. You know what I always thought would be worth a lot? What's that? The penny. I'm going to tell you why. If I was a real, like, sick, evil dictator... I'd make everything worthless except the penny. Okay. Nobody gives a fuck about pennies, bro. Yeah, <laughs> we treat them shit. It's somebody out there right now yeah. sitting on a shitload of pennies. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Just waiting for them to be like, you know that's what? True. We switching it from gold to bronze. Yeah. And you know, there's also somebody out here getting ready to go on Twitter. Oh, you think it's a coincidence that the brown currency is treated the worst? You know, when all these hey, shiny silver ones. The hey. last I'll be first. <laughs> <laughs> Come on and give me the give me a oh, Harry Tubman Lincoln, Lincoln on the brown hey, currency. Man, Lincoln free that's the slaves. brown president. Hey, man, huh? the last shall be first. By the way, I was talking to Andrew about this yesterday. I'm kind of tired of diversity, man. <laughs> Here we go. Old Charlemagne back. Old Charlemagne. Yo, listen. No. After you texted me that, yo, for real, because it's been so long, I get this text, right? I go, yo, you know what? I, and it, it was, you know what? And then there's a more dots. I was like, oh, this is about to be good. Because you, you only usually take a little step before you give the hot shit. You, like, prepared me. You said, you know what? That's, to that, get radio, my attention. That, that's that radio tease in you. And Anyway, so you tease, and then you hit me. You hit me with the I'm tired of diversity, and it was one of those moments where like, oh, there we go. No, I just think I'm gonna tell you why I think I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of the concept of diversity. Okay. And the reason I'm tired of the concept of diversity because I don't even think it should be that deep. I think that it should be either you got skills or you don't. Either right. you're great or you're not. Right. Either you can compete. Yeah. Or you can't compete. I right. think. I mean, but clearly that's not the way it is. That's just me being hypothetical. But just right. think about how dope the world would be if. It wasn't about gender, if it wasn't about race, if it wasn't about, you know, sexuality or anything. If it was right. just about it's good or it's not. That's it. This That's is- how it was presented to the world. I'm talking I'm just talking like from for me I'm talking about a straight in- entertainment standpoint, sure. I guess. Sure. Yep. You know what I mean? You're talking like sports. Sports whatever. Yeah. Like either you're good or you're not. Like yeah, nobody complains right. about yeah. diversity in the NBA. You know why? Because there's no white people there. And it would be whack <laughs> unless they could ball. If they could ball, then it would be all good. You know what I'm saying? If motherfucker, if there was a white dude out there that was balling like Steph Curry or uh, LeBron, great. Remember Fuck. remember last year when there was no white dudes at the All-Star game and I did the hashtag All-Star So White mm. and everybody got so upset because the Oscars so, Oscars so, or All-Star So Black, whatever. Like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I totally uh, understand your point. And um, this is why this is this is what I feel like the show used to be like a couple of years ago. You mm-hmm. would say outlandish shit, and then it's I, not outlandish though. But I would give the I would give a perspective that was the other side yeah. that was reasonable, right? And then you went all fucking snowflake social justice warrior on me. No, and now just, I have no, to no, be no, no, so no. extreme just in went my too post, outlandish. And now I see why because he feels like I haven't been outlandish enough. Yeah, you, you left me alone. Both of us. You let me al- okay. out alone in the right. outlandishness. Okay, now I understand. Anyway, but. Uh, so so with this situation, I completely agree with you. I would like it to be all about merit. Now, what some people would say, and I think that on some level we agree with, is that there are certain people that don't even have access to an industry because they don't even know that they can do that, right? Mm-hmm. So where whereas like the tech industry is like all dudes, a lot of like Indians and Asians, right? Uh, being a black woman is really sought after in the tech industry because they're going, maybe if other black women see a black woman in a position of power in the tech industry, they'll realize that's something they could do. So we need to promote that so we can get these young women to believe that they can be in when tech. When the reality is uh, black women should be in the tech industry if they got a hot app. If they, but here's the, <laughs> they got a but, hot but, website. What, okay, so here's the <laughs> argument. I the, the, the argument for the employer is that, is I don't want to hire anybody who's not as good just because of the color of their skin. That makes my business shitty. But then the argument for humanity is, but what if <clears throat> the, the next Steve Jobs is this young black chick in Milwaukee 
and she would never even create an app if she didn't see a black woman that's, doing that's, it in the that, first place. But that's that's that whole concept is ridiculous to me. And I'm gonna tell you why it's ridiculous. Yes, I do feel like people gravitate towards. Oh, it's so fun people, being the PC guy. No, no, no. I never no. get to be the no, PC I, guy. I think that concept is ridiculous because I do feel like people gravitate towards you know people that they look like. Of course, Absolutely. but I graduate. I mean, I gravitate towards success. Period. Steve yeah. Jobs' story is just as intriguing, if not more, to me than Jay Z. You know what I mean? But it's because you've had success already. No, even before that, I'm you all, did. Yeah, I just like dope shit. Right. Like, if it, like, come on, how could you not? But when did you start working with white people? When did I start? Yeah, not till you're in New York, really. Uh, nah, that's not true. I that's... mean, there were white people probably at these radio stations, but like, no white, no black people on radio stations. <laughs> no, but there were white, there were white people at the radio station. But I'm saying, like, when did you start, like, literally working on shows with white folks? Literally working, probably on MTV. Shows. Nah, my second uh, program director ever that fired me, Corey Hill, was white. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not working on the same level as. He was my program director. I mean, he was a he was a personality too. Right. So he used to come on afternoons. I mean, I've always worked with white people in some capacity. Sure. But much more so now that you've gained some success because now yeah, you're yeah, just yeah, around yeah. other people who yeah, are also I mean, successful. And most of these industries are majority white people well I mean that's the function of America right the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like exactly that's why it's so funny to me like yeah, with the Chinese the, basketball association is multi, you know, mostly Chinese it's Chinese like, well, got yeah, a basketball association come on bro where you think Yao Ming and all them come from why the fuck would he ever leave he's 7 foot tall and everybody else is 4 feet Yo, and they he got some leave. tall ass dude <laughs> oh this is a throwback episode <laughs> show man all what? insensitive and I get to say some wild I don't give a fuck. politically correct I've shit never, I'm not, I haven't given a fuck I've just been thinking about a lot of other things but it's just like I think the revolt, the the lawsuit that Revolt TV yeah. is currently Put, facing. Explain this though, because well, this Revolt is, TV is getting sued by some former well, producers. Explain to people that used what Revolt TV is, because nobody's watched it. Revolt TV is the White Blaze Network. It's okay. the, black, the, black <laughs> the Black Blaze, Blaze Network. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Revolt TV is the Black Blaze Network. They just don't have a Tommy Lauren. No, All right, they have nobody. <laughs> they have nothing. <laughs> they have Diddy, okay. and Diddy won't even go. Three on. people watch Revolt. It's yeah. Diddy, French Montana, Cassie. That's it. I don't even think that these kids watch it, but you, whatever. <laughs> okay. So Revolt TV is, they broadcast The Breakfast Club mm -hmm. every morning. They got a partnership with iHeartMedia. Five former producers who used to work there, all white men, are suing Revolt, claiming mm -hmm. reverse racism. First of all, that is the dumbest term I've ever heard in my life. And the reason it's the dumbest term I've ever heard in my life is because the reverse of racism would be equality. <laughs> the reverse of racism is no racism. What the fuck are you talking? Yeah, racist, just say racism. Yeah, like, yeah, why, yeah. Why, what do you mean? What do you mean reverse? Because it implies that you can't even be racist if you're black. It's, it's kind of insulting. It, it doesn't make any sense. What, yeah. the, what what bothers me is when people say you have some people who won't even acknowledge, quote unquote, regular racism. So if you won't acknowledge regular racism, what is this reverse how, what racism? Is this reverse shit? Shit? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. say. How about you just say discrimination? Sure, That's fine. You got discriminated prejudice. against. Yeah. Whatever. Based on your race. I'm not even going to lie to you. I got a phone call yesterday from one of my homies who work at a website, and they told me about it, and mm -hmm. I thought he was joking. So I was like, Get the, I was like, you so fucking stupid. I, thought, I literally thought it looked like a joke. Yeah. Like, it looked funny. Yeah, yeah. And then I actually saw the shit, and I really could not stop fucking laughing. Yeah. And the reason I couldn't stop laughing was the wording. Because if you're an older white man, and I don't yeah. know the situation between Revolt and these guys, I don't work right. with Revolt. The only thing I do is come on that show every day. I don't talk to nobody on the fucking fourth floor. Yeah, the yeah. Breakfast Club's on the third floor. I don't. I don't even. I don't even like Revolt. Y'all know that. <laughs> like, like that is that is known. I don't care about that. Huge shit. mistake to put Breakfast Club on Revolt. Oh my god. Hey, hey whatever, man. It, it's not even the money. Like they don't pay us that a lot. Like, yeah, but it could have saved MTV having that on. You could have done what Howard Stern did for the E Channel. I'm with by you. Putting that on MTV. I think it could still happen and it could be on a bigger network. But my thing is like. I mean, it happened with Stern. Stern went to CBS after E. He was good for Stern, though. He, I watched Stern yeah, on E. That's how I knew Stern. Yeah, yeah, he was great for Stern. But I just didn't care about... Uh, I just didn't... I don't know what goes on with Revolt, so I don't know. But all I'm saying is, right. I just thought it was funny that five white guys would claim discrimination. And the one line in there... I want to I read it verbatim. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to read verbatim. I remember. One line... The, the guy said that he did not have to know about black culture to do his job. Okay. Well, what was his job? I don't know. Well, before we make a judgment on that, we got to know what his job no, is. No, right? because I don't agree with that. If his job is to run the board, he doesn't have to know how to know about black culture to run the board. If his job is to... Say again? You're a producer. Chris, come on, hop on the mic. You're a if, you're, if you're a producer, 
Right. Of it, you have to know about the culture. I can't be a producer of a country music station and not know the culture. Sure. Like, and it I, I, and, it and, depends. And, Are you producing the traffic segment? I'm, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here, but it's important to understand if... I know we all feel the same way about this, right? Mm-hmm. The, we all feel the same way is, what the hell are these 50-year-old white dudes doing on Revolt? People, <laughs> that's like, the big that's oh, literally that's the big issue but what, why are they okay. on Revolt Revolt should be run by 13 year old black kids okay they should be run by 13 year old black kids all wearing Yeezys and pants that are way too tight to put on around the ankles no that should be the people who are running absolutely and, that, and that, that's the conversation we was having yesterday you need old. the bible says old men for counsel young men for war you need sure. older people who know television mm-hmm. but you need young kids who know content yep. so if somebody tells you you don't know the culture. That's not a race thing, bro. Let's, yeah. It's not even really an age thing. Either you know culture or you don't. Bro, we've been, I've been saying this for the last fucking two years. There's a difference between culture and race. I don't care if these In are, this situation specifically. I don't care if these are 55-year-old black dudes. If they're detached from the culture, they gotta, go. they gotta go as well. So this is a function of age and also a lack of uh, cultural awareness. And this is the problem when we conflate race with these other st- with these other uh, I don't know uh, mm, indicators, <sighs> right? When we mm-hmm. conflate ra- race with these other indicators, it seems like it's this race issue. And now we're not even getting at the meat of the problem. The problem is the fact that you're detached from what you're talking about. And it's you just that be simple. There. And I have this coach. I have this conversation about people being culturally clueless all the time. It's not even just a white thing. I literally was just having this conversation. With black people, I have this conversation with black people at Viacom, at iHeart. I literally yeah. was just having this conversation with a room full of black people, and I say it all the time on this podcast and on the radio, how I feel like sometimes radio isn't properly reflecting the culture. Black radio isn't properly reflecting what's going on in the culture. Mm. This is not a it's not a race thing. Either you're of the culture or you're not of the culture. You sound like Andrew Schultz. Period. No, I don't. Because I've been saying you this. You sound just like Schultz. None of this is new, though. This, all I say every week is it's a cultural well, thing, Andrew, not a race well, Andrew, thing. if you actually would listen to people, you <sighs> would hear me say this don't all the time. get defensive. <laughs> okay. You're getting very defensive okay. right but now. I'm just saying, like, I just really... We agree. Felt, I really felt it comical that they would sue for discrimination. I just... I did. I thought it was hilarious. They did it because you can now. It's a... It's a competition about who's the most offended. Right now, when you get fired, you say it happened because I'm a woman. It happened because I'm a black guy. It happened yeah. because I'm apparently you could say it happened because I'm a white guy. These were five guys that sat around together like, look, this is an all black network. I guarantee we could get some money if we just say that we're fired because we're white. It's just now were any black people fired along with them? I don't know. I don't know were anything the about only, Were they the only f- uh, peop- were they the only five white people that worked there and they were all fired no, at the same time? No, white people still work there now. Okay, so white people still work there now. Right, <coughs> so we got to know more about the situation before we jump to conclusions. I just didn't like the fact that the New York Daily News, and this is the funniest thing about uh, continuing to grow as a public figure. Hmm. Alternative facts and fake news is so goddamn real. Because I'm, sitting- huh? I'm sitting there reading this shit and I'm like, what? what is this? We're not even in, we're not even in the lawsuit. Well, explain. So basically, the New York Daily News yes. reported that the Breakfast, breakfast Club said white people are not welcome behind the scenes at the Breakfast Club. Exactly. <laughs> like, yo, Instead of fuck? revolt, it acted like it was your yes. show. Yes. So this fake news shit is real. And it said that African American members of the Breakfast Club staff came to work drunk and hung over. And I'm like, this this is Angela Yee, okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> but 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 it wasn't even us. If you yeah. look at the lawsuit, they actually named the person at Revolt who they said was coming. Being drunk and hung over. Wow. So I'm like, yo, this dude at the Daily News, his name is, um... Nope, I gotta get his name. I got his name. Don't right be, there, yeah, don't be alternative facts with it. I got his name because I gave him donkey today today. Hold on one second. What's this motherfucker's name? Hold on. Beatbox or something, man. <laughs> oh, you want me to beatbox? Oh, I got that. Look, here's just a perfect example, and I and I do honestly feel this way about why you can't make everything into a race issue. And I'm I'm actually glad that people got to see it from the other side because I think that it's almost more clear when you get to see it from your perspective. Like Steven Rex Brown. When we see when we see, for example, like when we see a, a black guy uh, say that he was fired or didn't get a promotion because of racism, or we see a woman say that she was fired or didn't get a promotion because of sexism. 
we immediately have empathy because we've seen this happen in our lives. We've seen a black friend of ours probably be discriminated against at work, and we've seen a woman be discriminated against at work. So we naturally gravitate to this idea of, you know what? It definitely was racism. It definitely was sexism. Now, when we see five 50-year-old white dudes get fired and they go, we did it because of our race, we go, that's absolutely silly. No, All, no, no, I'm not saying that. No, no, no. All I'm trying to say right now is there are situations where women get fired because of sexism. And there are situations where black people get fired because of racism, yeah. but there are also situations where you're just not good where, enough. Where you're just not good enough, or you're not right for the job. That's fine. And and when we conflate everything to race, you miss out on why you weren't good enough. Like these five white dudes, if they truly in their heart feel like they were fired because they're white, they'll miss out from the fact that you are an Listen. old motherfucker in a young business. Yes. And if you want to be relevant in this young business, you need to <coughs> invest in the culture. Invest in the culture that you are. That you are. By producing. investing in the culture, that means studying in it. That means that means. Studying Studying it, it means having people around you who are invested in it. I don't, right. I don't know everything, but I keep people around me that are in tune with everything. Absolutely. And can say, yo, Charlotte, look at this, Charlotte, look at that. Plus, I still love it and live it every motherfucking day. Sure. I'm watching the Chappelle stand-up special last night, and I'm like... We're going to get to that. The reason Chappelle is so dope is because he's always been of the culture. I watched Chris Rock bring the pain on... Monday. Sure. This ran Well, it wasn't randomly while I was watching it, but I was, I was listening to it on the way in, and I'm like... Yo, this is so of the culture. The name right. of it was Bring the Pain at a time Wu-Tang was red hot. He right. walked out the Touch Me, Tease Me by Case. Sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, he's, like, yeah. he's of the culture. Sure. Like, people like dope shit that's of the culture. You know why people like Ed Sheeran all across the board? Because mm -hmm. he's of the culture. What culture? I don't know. Whatever culture you think is cool. Hip-hop, you call it whatever you want. He's of the culture. Right. He's from the UK. But he'll still come through the Breakfast Club because he understands how culturally relevant the Breakfast Club motherfucking sure. is. I also don't think that he's trying to attach himself to any culture that he's nah. not a part of. Like I think he's making pretty genuine music, and I think I think you and can he be, likes what's cool. Sure, I think you can be a fifty-year-old white dude and um, and be genuinely just who you are if you're a fifty-year-old white dude from the suburbs and kind of corny. But you can be learned about the culture that you're talking about and invested and really research it and know what's going on and then you can be effective. There are white By African American way. studies professors at universities all across the country That's and a great these point. people me to my next point. these people research this struggle, they research the history and they put it out there in the By world. By the way, what you just said is a conversation I was having last week. I was up at uh I don't even want to say I was at but it's up at where I'm doing some business with some people and we were having a conversation about different documentaries. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the different documentaries that are out now. Like you see like Khalif Brada, you see documentaries about people. And the reason documentaries like that are so good mm -hmm. a lot of the times is because they're done they always have to be done by people who do the due diligence and do the research. Sure. Historians. White people are so intrigued sometimes by black culture because this is something new to them. It's just like anything else. Discovery Dude. is good. So it's like if you're if you're sitting around and you, you're not of this world, like a like a story like Khalif Browder, maybe nothing to a tax stone or a Casanova because they lived it. They like they think that's normal. Like I did 32 months in the box. Like yep. that shit is crazy. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But to somebody who's from the outside looking in, perfect example. We in Roscoe's. Remember when Polly was telling you all these stories about I her uncle so Shook Knight? Fascinated. You was intrigued. That shit yeah. is funny to me to watch. But I'm realizing, like, this is not something that's normal to you or something that you've grown Dude, up on. We've heard these stories over and over, so they're normal to us. Here's a perfect example. Jordan Peele creates, and, and, and this is, and also Chappelle to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. People, and even Chris Rock to a certain extent. You need a nigga whisperer. Real talk, not even that, because I know you're... <laughs> Shout, shout out to Neil Brennan. Shout out to Neil Brennan. But 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 like like when you look at like when you look at Dave or you look at a Jordan Peele or and even the key guys, like these aren't guys that grew up strictly in black culture. No, absolutely not. Like, I mean, you know, Chris went to a white school. You know, Dave uh, is originally from D.C., but I think he moved to, like, Cleveland and he grew up and went to, like, all white. So he's part of black culture, but also observing it from what white people see. Yeah. Right? And like you said, sometimes as an outsider, you see shit about another culture that the people that are too close to it never see. Like, when I see black comics observations about white people, it's shit I didn't even notice. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And the same thing when white people are probably observing, like when you have those guys that made The Wire, I bet there was some shit for the people in Baltimore. I was like, yeah, that's so normal to us. But the rest of us, black and white, were yeah. like, yo, this is wild. Do you know on a lot of those shows, they actually hire uh, a consultant. Consultant. Absolutely. That, like, 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 like a political show 
shows will hire like political people to be executive producers. Some of the CIA the guys get hired all the time Absolutely. for the, like Homeland Absolutely. and that kind of shit like that. Absolutely. But, but and those CIA guys are up close. But to be honest, the people who stand from a little bit further away and have that bird's eye view of what's going on, sometimes they pick up on cultural nuance that we could never pick That's up. That's what on. makes it good. Yeah. Like I don't even know shit. <laughs> Like you what might you're not saying even is what we're shit what you're saying you. about all of this is what we're saying. Yeah, you need the executives, the old motherfuckers who aren't involved and that just know how to do TV and create shit. But you need the people who are on the front lines of it to make everything it's great. A balance. It's a balance. It's a balance, it's a balance it's a man. Yang, you need you need the execs, but you also need the people who know what the fuck is going on. The problem with most of these buildings that we go in, work on what you're good at. It's all. Old executives trying to make decisions. About trying to young make shit. decisions about young culture. Bro. Listen, I do not want to have conversations about kids if ain't no kids in the room. It, it, Stop telling me what kids like if ain't no kids in the goddamn and also, room. If you don't like kids, if you resent kids, and you think these kids are stupid, stop making TV for them. Word. Because that's what happens. It's like when we're not making TV for them, you're telling me how stupid. Because I, I talk to these folks. You're telling me how stupid these kids are. You're telling me how much mm -hmm. you hate their music. Mm -hmm. You're telling me how corny they are and how you don't respect what they you do. don't get it. And they, how they don't get it. And now you're making TV for them and they're not watching your TV. Well, I maybe it's because it. they know that you resent them. I hate it. And stop doing the same shit over and over again. Like, I'm sorry, but you're going to make hip hop squares again. That shit is actually kind of good, though. It's funny. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to did you. VH1 did it? Yeah, VH1 did it. I'm not going to lie. Is it's it? actually kind of good, man. I haven't watched it. Because it's so culturally relevant because they actually have real stars in the squares now. Right, right. It's not like, you know. So they put me in a square. That's what been, I'm saying. Like, and I had never <laughs> been on TV. <laughs> So, I had never been on TV. So it's a good mixture because you got like the T.I. This is what's funny about it. P prime example. You got like a T.I. in one Duval square. Duval looks hilarious in it. I just want to point Duval out. Duval kills He it. is a, you got, a And hand. they got a real great host this time. They had a whack host last time. They got D-Ray this time. Yeah, yeah. Right? Who they so, had last time? I don't even remember. But they, <laughs> so, so, so they got, they had, they had, they, they had T.I. I I'd get him. <laughs> Listen, they had T.I. in a square, right? But then they'll have like somebody like Safari in a square. Yeah. And it's the same feeling I know I had when I did Arsenio and then Terry was there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because yeah. T.I. sitting there like, I'm How too good for this shit. But T.I., so you can tell, you can tell, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can tell because they give T.I. a throne. Yeah. But Safari's just in a regular chair. Hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And there's one point where T.I. and Duvall just start killing Safari. No. Yes. I can't see. It was, and it was worse because I heard about that the day it happened. Yeah. T.I. told Safari, like, you on love and hip hop, but didn't your hip hop love run out on you? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny though. Yeah, but that's, that's that funny. scripted shit that somebody handed him a. No, card no, you could know they was going at it. You could really? tell. Yes, man, because him and Duval was just going back and forth. Well, I know Duval's quick off the cuff. And you know him and Duval boys, yeah, so that's yeah, like yeah, they're playing yeah, ball with yeah, Safari. Yeah, yeah. But it was they should have let Duval host that shit. Duval is a Duval hand, can't talk. Bro. <laughs> Say what? He can't talk well enough to host that shit. Of course he can't. Duval can't talk well enough. To I that. guess you got to let Duval shoot. He's not a point guard. He's you just got to let no, him shoot, shoot, shoot. Guard. But you know what he should be? He we should saw be... that with Ain't That America. I know, I know. But you, you know should... how long you used to take Duval to get takes? Bro, I was Simple there. Simple stuff. Welcome back to Ain't That America. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did y'all think I just said? <laughs> Look. Welcome back to Ain't That America. <laughs> 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 what did I just say? You know what, what I just it? said? Yeah, welcome back to Ain't That America. I know because I speak Duval. We speak fluent Duval. Fluent Duval. It's totally fine. But he's been scuba diving too much. And fuck with his equilibrium he, his ears are all fucked up he can't hear exactly in his head it comes out fine <laughs> to the rest of us it's just bloop 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 I'm your host Lil Duval no that's the only word he'll get right all the time it's Lil Duval Lil Duval that shit come out Lil Duval HD crystal clear Lil Duval I'm just hope Lil Duval that's the only thing he'll get right but they should let him be center square like remember when they let Whoopi be center square Whoopi, John Rivers exactly the funny people were center square because you always go to them and then you have the other people on the exterior. The only thing I didn't like about Hip Hop Squares, the new one, the new one, yeah, it's good, but it seems like it's like a Boondocks episode. Like girls be just twerking for no goddamn reason. <laughs> they got a stripper pole there, and mm. the motherfuckers be hitting the pole. And I'm like, all right, this is a little bit. But I guess you got to be that it, much extra to get people to give just a fuck. Old Wild and Out. No. No. I think that's nah. what the idea was. It's like let's do this with let's do what Wild and Out works. Wild and Out is is a great platform and it's a great show. But let's do it with more famous people and a little bit older to fit the VH1 demographic. It's good. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's not something I'm dying to tune into every week. My but if it's is, on, I'm not gonna turn. If it fails once, it don't need to fail twice. Depends, man. If it feels like I just if people feel like that about Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart be done out here. <laughs> but they didn't recreate Kevin Hart's exact show that failed. They recreated Kevin Hart. 
No, they did it. Kevin yeah, Hart been did, fine. Man. They didn't recreate his exact show to fail. Do I think that? Do I think that that the show Hip Hop Squares should come back again after it fails once on a hip hop network? No. But that being said, that being said, do I think the people that were on that show should not do TV again? Of course they should do TV again. Well, by the way, we're both you wrong. You see the difference. But we're both, we're, 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 you're wrong because Hip Hop Squares had like three million views. It did. What? That shit was that shit broke records. Stop playing. Bro. I swear to God. Stop playing, bro. I promise. Stop you, playing, man. bro. Hip, the new hip hop squares broke records, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you yeah, right now. What did it about. follow? It followed. It followed the premiere of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Oh, that's uh, come on. Yeah, but I mean, it's come hard. On. It's hard to hold them leads, bro. Bro, bro what? Ain't that America killed it after a while? Now, did it? Yeah. Remember, it was getting like a million views or something like that. The highest rated uh, original no, programming no, 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 on no, MTV, no, too. No, 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 no. While now it was getting a million. And then Ain't That America was getting like 400,000. No, it was, key, it was like 700,000. It was the highest rated original programming oh, MTV2 history. Let me see. Yeah, Hip Hop Square. This week, Hip Hop Squares VH1, 9 p.m., 2.2. Seven. Unpl- unbelievable <laughs> numbers. But how, mu- how, much, how much love did hip hop get? Because I want to know what it retained. That's how you know how much that shit really did. I don't remember. I just, this, VH1's hip hops over cable rivals with Monday premieres. Um, it don't matter if the, if the, if it's retaining the audience is fine. If it works, it works. God bless it. Fuck it. I mean, that's the reality. Of the two million views, three point two million over something shit. If like it works, means. it works. I personally yeah. would not repeat some shit that didn't work. That's me personally. I wouldn't do that as an example. But some things are just a, a matter of bad positioning. Because I'll tell you one thing. I thought your show, Jobs That Don't Suck, was a great show. It was a good show. And I thought, no, I thought it was a great show. And I'm gonna tell you why. I thought it was a great show because I feel like that's the kind of show that's necessary because it shows kids other career options out there other than fucking entertainment, athletics. Yeah. I feel like that show was just bad. Badly positioned. I think. I think the issue with that show. I think it was aspirational. I think the issue is that with that show was uh, they got greedy for ratings. What do you mean? So what happened was like <coughs> MTV Two were was used to guy code ratings, and they were used to. I don't know if Wild and Out had come oh, no, out. No, you're that. right. So they, they, you don't give it a chance. They they had an un, un uh, they had an unrealistic yeah, 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 expectation yeah, yeah. for the ratings. Like this is a brand new show. It's got really no, yeah. like, star. Like, I mean, it had me. I've been on Geico, but I'm not, like, a star in the world right there. You're, you're banking this just on the show. And it was doing well. I think it was getting, like, 350,000 viewers uh, an episode, which for MTV2 at the time wasn't that bad. Yeah. I mean, Geico was getting 450,000, yeah, so yeah. it wasn't, like, crazy. But they were like, oh, it's not doing 450,000? We can't do it. Yeah, I get over. it. I get it. It's fine. I mean, but I just think that you had an unrealistic expectation for the viewers. I don't even know why we got on this conversation, but let's get back to the old white men. No, I want to. I think. Well, did we close that up? I think we closed it. I up. mean, my whole thing is like, I just feel like, like, and I, I just feel like I'm a little sick of this diversity shit, only because, like I said, I just feel like it should be about competing. Period. But like, remember when I told y'all I hated comic books because they were until would get black people aren't in it. Or until we- white, uh, sorry, until women aren't in it, or until oh. some minorities aren't in it. By and the then way, it's about diversity. Oh, don't just throw minorities, because the motherfuckers I see complaining the most right now about not being included mm-hmm. is the Caucasians. Well, white people well, want in of everything. Yeah, well, white people are mad about you wouldn't not be- being excluded. You wouldn't believe the conversations I've had with my agents. You wouldn't believe. I believe it. They're probably telling you, you that. They're probably it. telling you that there's nothing for you in Hollywood. Yep. Because Hollywood is about diversity I, I right have now, my, and as it should be, because the shows that are popping are black. I have my I have my agent who's Mexican, by the way, um, telling me, bro, there's just nothing for thirty year old white guys. There's just nothing for thirty year old white guys out here. <laughs> Literally saying that to me. There's nothing. Every role I go out for is gay, by the way. Because as a white guy, get in where the fuck you hey, fit man, in, so bro. You better learn how to get your dick sucked. Let me tell you something. Together. I got some surprises <laughs> for you, boy. I got some surprises for you. By the way, that's when you. Oh, that's when you use your white privilege. I'm gonna tell you why. Yeah, yeah. Ain't gonna be no. But you know what though. They gonna pause and no homo you. Oh, <laughs> they gonna, we I'm gonna about see. to tell you that you're not gonna get that. We gonna you see. gonna get that. I got some surprises for you, my friend. <laughs> Let me tell you this: the closet door is secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, but young Hezzy. Dick talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but real talk. Young Hezzy and the Hezzy stands for homo sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you this, and this is real. This young Hezzy sexual. Hezzy sexual. <laughs> but this is real. And this is what, because my agents came came with me and they said that shit. And they were thinking that it was going to get some reaction out of me. Like, oh, this is fucked up. I don't give a fuck. This happened on Uncommon Sense where you were like, you know, and I told you, I was like, listen, the greatest, the best person for the role 
might not be the person who gets it. But cream does rise to the top. Absolutely. And I'll just outwork these motherfuckers. That's and it. if there isn't a platform for me, I will create my own platform. There you go. That's what we did with Brilliant Idiots. The opportunity comes to those who create. So you got to create your own shit because here's the thing. Who am I to tell people of different you know, races or different genders to create your own show on this platform, right? And then when there's a, you know less roles in Hollywood for white males to complain about there not being a lot of roles. My feeling is just, if, if there's not a role that I want, I will create my own fucking role. I'm not gonna sit here and bitch. And matter of fact, I actually love that there's more diversity yeah. because what does that do? That that raises the bar, that raises the competition. I gotta step my game up And now. by the way, it's a seasonal thing, it happens. We see this all the time. Like right now, mm. black stuff is popping. Hip hop is popping, it is what it is. Like now- Hollywood needs diversity. Hollywood needs- It needs it. You have to have yeah. it. No, no. Hollywood needs diversity. This yeah. is a good thing. If it's if it's popular right now for there to be Indian shows and Muslim shows and black shows, then this is a good, positive thing. The cream will rise to the top. And all it does is just makes me and anybody else in my situation step my game up to be that much more undeniable. And guess what? It, it, Don't offer me some shit because I'm white. You. Make I'm me undeniably the one ready for that role. But by the way, so what if you do, what if what if you're the only white guy that people are fucking with in Perfect. black culture? Go get that goddamn check and take that job I'm opportunity. I'm going be there, absolutely. Who gives a fuck? No, who, whoever said there was anything oh, bad with that? B. Willis. Bro. Remember Willis from Jefferson's? What was the white guy name on Willis? Oh, that had Tom. the black oh, wife. Tom. 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 Be Tom. Shit, I can't wait to be Tom. Tom got Tom was booming. Dude. Why not be Tom? I'm man? all about being Tom. My point is, if you not I came from I come from a sports background. So let's compete, man. <clears throat> I'm with you. I don't want this like forced diversity or forced anything. I want the best person to have it. it. And if you're going to make me be that much better, that's then it. let's go. It, listen, that's when you know if you're popping or not. Period. And that's one of the reasons I'm glad I saw Bring the Pain on Monday. Because then I saw Chappelle show the next day. And I'm like, that's the bar to me. Like, And that's why when I see a lot of these new comedians and they... They just don't do it for me because I'm comparing it to the best, baby. I'm not As you should. I'm not comparing y'all to just what's happening now. I'm not comparing LeBron to just what's happening now. I'm sorry. If y'all tell me LeBron's one of the all-time greats, guess who I'm thinking about? Jordan. The all-time motherfucking greats. Yeah, of course. I'm not thinking about these motherfuckers that's out here now with no goddamn rings. It's easier to be better than your colleagues. It's not easy to be better than the greats. Ooh, that's what you want, though. And it's also so funny, too, because be I saw a study that said... Uh, <laughs> It was talking about blackish and it was talking about insecure and Atlanta and you know the ratings that they get. But yo, majority of the people watching these shows aren't even black. Well, yeah, that's with everything. That's with hip hop. The majority of people listening aren't black. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just like yo, just make dope shit. If people are into, if this is what people are into, and guess what? It's not even about making dope. It's just about making what's good. Blackish is a great show. I'm not. I don't like blackish because it's a. A black show? There's plenty of black shows I hate. I hate when people act like just because something's black, I'm going to fuck with it. I ain't never thought about voting for Ben Carson. I ain't never thought about voting for Al Sharpton. Mm -hmm. Okay? You fucked with Barack because Barack was a motherfucking beast. So it's like the same thing with these motherfucking shows. I love girls. Ain't nobody talking about girls on Sunday night. Did you even know girls was on? No. But girls I, don't, is in his I don't watch that show. Girls is in his final season yeah. right now. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. I go and look on Twitter and that shit ain't trending. Yeah. Nothing. But it's actually good this season. But nobody cares. Yeah. Like, they just don't. I just don't care about like rich white girl problems. It, do, it don't reflect the culture. Well, I guess my culture it just is not yeah, yeah, It don't reflect what you see on a, a regular yeah, everyday basis. And the white girls I hang around don't act like that. Yeah. I just, just I'm just uninterested in their lives. I'll tell you what show is fucking great, though. Big Little Lies. Have you seen that I heard show? I about that. Oh, my God. It's got... Dude, HBO stays winning. Just unbelievable right, TV. I mean, they're This is Legends. the most... This is a better show, like a more sophisticated show than Westworld. Westworld was more interesting. The mm -hmm. world was more interesting. But this show, in terms of, like, structure and, and sophistication... What's it about? <sighs> okay. It's a, there's a murder happening. Monterey is like the, is like the tech area of California. It's like Northern California. Mm -hmm. Basically, there's a murder that happens. You know that there's a murder that happens, right? In this town, and it's this like wealthy, fucking rich, rich ass town because it's all this tech money. And it's about like the kind of drama and beef that goes on amongst these moms, these like house moms. You know, some are stay at home, one is a business mom. But what's dope about the show is you don't know who gets murdered or who does the killing. Mm. And you're finding that, you just know that a murder happens. So you're flashing back from the end of the show to the beginning of the, the end of the season to the beginning of the season, mm -hmm. all throughout. Everybody is a suspect. Everybody is also the one that could get killed. Like you who? Have, 
Say what? Sounds like Clue. It's fucking Clue. You okay. don't know who died yeah. or how they got killed or who did it. And every episode, they're making you think, oh, it's this person. Oh, it's that person. It 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 showcases. There's this one couple that's in an abusive relationship. Like the guy hits her and shit. She kind of like you know slaps him back a little bit. He's the he, she's the, he's the one that's abusing her. Mm-hmm. It is the most intriguing relationship I've ever seen on TV because you actually understand how a couple can stay together even though the guy is hitting the woman. It is unbelievably vulnerable. Like, that these, it all stems from his insecurity and her insecurity mm-hmm. and this idea because after he beats, after he hits her, they fuck passionately. They oh. make, like, passionate love. Oh. Yeah, bro, it is wild, dude. It is a wild show. Big Little Lies. I don't co-sign anything. It seems like it's some girly shit. It's not some girly shit at all. Watch this fucking show, HBO, every Sunday. Yeah, Unbelievable. I, you know you know what else pissed me off about the whole diversity thing? What's that? Um, I, was, I was trying to watch Iron Fist on Netflix. And, like, my daughter has this Is that thing. on yet? Yeah, it's on. My, my, do- my 18-month-old daughter has this thing where she loves to grab the remotes and start messing with stuff, and, like, she'll just mess up our settings and stuff. Yeah. Man, I turned on Iron Fist and tried to watch Iron Fist, and that shit was in Spanish, and I couldn't figure out how to stop that shit. And you were just like, nah. I was so pissed off, and then I fucking went to the settings and realized they got 20 different languages, and I was like, this is fucking America. <laughs> All right? Speak English. <laughs> okay? Dude. If I type in my name, Leonard McKelvey, and I say I'm motherfucking English, I don't want no other goddamn languages on. All right? <laughs> I want to know what deal fell through through for you that you're getting so honest about your political leanings this episode no, opposed to the last I'm, 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 four I'm, months. Anything you've ever heard come out of my mouth is how I absolutely mm-hmm. positively feel. Mm-hmm. You were a little extra game. PC the last four months. No, I wasn't PC. You just didn't like what I was saying. You were No, I don't like what you're saying now, but it's what not PC. Saying? You just said you agree with me. No, I don't. I don't agree with you at all. When did I say I agree with you about the language? No, you said you no not that. I'm talking about Relax. the whole conversation about diversity. I'm talking about, I like the fact that you're being honest about your opinions. I might disagree well, with that. I've not been honest about honest my about opinions. Charlamagne. Tell me, give me an example. Charlamagne, this is by far the least PC you've been in the last four months. I don't know what you're talking about. See, that's 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 when somebody... By far. That's when somebody... When you just said, I'm in America, speak English, last four months you would never speak. It would be something like, listen, there's plenty of cultures and languages in America. We all need to respect there them. There is plenty of cultures together. and languages in America, and we should respect them. But that don't mean I want that shit on my Netflix. <laughs> What are you talking about? Build the wall. I'm Build no, the see, wall. That's, see, that's just stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he's mad because I don't agree with building the wall. That's PC because I don't want a goddamn wall built. Jesus no, Christ. No, next week you're going to want that wall, bro. No, I I'm see not. it. You're going straight conservative. No, you know no, what I'm it not. is? You know what's going to make them build that you wall? Once you pay that tax, those taxes, you're like, I paid how much in taxes? Fuck it, bro. Nah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the term conservative. I don't like the term liberal. Mm-hmm. Either. I don't like the term libertarian or whatever because I feel like people should be allowed to change their minds. That's what Tommy Lawrence is going through and I want to put a button on this real quick just by saying not even a button I just want to say listen all minorities Mm -hmm. all marginalized groups take advantage of the confusion that is happening with white people right now (laughs) white people are marginalized too now five absolutely white men were fired from Revolt TV white people they feel like victims now we are they feel discriminated against they feel oppressed take advantage of this shit while you can they're infighting amongst each other motherfucking Glenn Beck and Tommy Lauren Mm. are having a war of words Tommy works for Glenn Beck's fucking company and Glenn Beck suspended her for a week Mm. because she went on The View and decided not to have a a quote unquote conservative viewpoint about abortion now set this up what was the viewpoint her original viewpoint on abortion was uh she i think she said that pro-life people are hypocrites pro-choice people are hypocrites she called it murder she called she it called murder. abortion murder yeah and she was anti-abortion yeah. when she said it on the blaze she said it on the blaze. then she went on <clears throat> the view the view and said she was pro-choice and well and eh. she said that verbatim she but what was the reason behind it I don't even fucking remember. I think she said it was because she considers herself a libertarian. So, so Tommy, yeah, she was like, "Stay out of my guns," and right. she said, "Stay so, out of my guns and my body or some shit." So here's like the that. thing: her, you know, Tommy's Tommy's viewpoints are usually like political, low hanging fruit, right? Like all the things that she talks about on her, like you know, what is that stupid thing that she does? She does the final rundown. Thoughts. Oh, the final thoughts, whatever. It's it's just like the easiest conservative political arguments and that's why dumb people gravitate to it it's whatever her current view on abortion is quite sophisticated it's a libertarian view which is based on the idea of hey government you have to stay out of our policy you have to stay out of our bodies leave people up to their own desires and they'll make the right decisions politics out of it who gives a fuck if you want to have an abortion or not 
You know well, why motherfuckers don't believe in abortion? People. You know why people don't believe in abortion? You ain't got the wrong chick pregnant yet. Wait, when say you, that again? <laughs> <laughs> the reason, motherfuckers that don't like abortions haven't gotten the wrong chick pregnant yet. Yeah, like, it's just so? that simple. Yeah, yeah, when, you, yeah, yeah. when you're in a relationship or something and you get the wrong chick pregnant, yeah, yeah, yeah. you want that little scoop scoop. You're going to send yeah, that 375. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, Charlamagne is off the PC wagon, no, bro. Welcome back. It's not PC. Welcome back, I've said bro. this before, oh, this is beautiful. I'm I've so said happy. this before. I'm so happy. When I find myself... Wanting to like make you come across more politically correct. I know that you're back. I've said this before. This is beautiful. And, and the thing about what Glenn Beck and uh, the, the thing that bugs me about Glenn Beck is Glenn Beck got on his radio show mm -hmm. and said he feels like Tommy Lauren is basically just an opportunity with her views. So she says things that are convenient in the moment. Right. And I'm like, Glenn, you just realizing this? Now that she says something you don't agree with or you don't like, no, now you're calling this out. But so the, do they literally quick, have like though, a party line? They have to, you have to have certain viewpoints to be on that platform. Nah, I don't I mean, think so. I mean, maybe, said, but but here's, that's here's what's no, insane. Well, Glenn, did you hear Glenn's radio rant? He said that you can be pro-choice on the blaze. He said, "I believe in freedom of speech." What he said he didn't agree with is people basically flip-flopping and, and saying things when they're in moments just for opportunities. So I got to look back at her thing, but just because she believes that women should have freedom of choice because she wants the government outside of their bodies doesn't mean that she doesn't disagree with abortion. So that's what's tricky about her statement. A lot of people don't understand. She could think abortion is murder. She could think abortion is absolutely wrong. But what she believes even higher than that is the government shouldn't decide whether fine. it's legal or not. So she can still be, it's a very savvy point of view for her because she's preparing herself brilliantly to fill that Fox News role that Megyn Kelly left well, wide open. My thing open. is this, I, the whole abortion conversation is stupid to me. Why? Was something alive? Of course. Did you kill it? Yeah. Okay. But here's the thing. <laughs> like, what? But here's like, the thing about the abortion. We murder so glad. bugs every day. We do. We, we hit roadkill and kill animals and keep it moving. Like let, let me tell you what it is. It's a drone strike. And this is why people don't. Mm. It is a drone strike. Everybody in America supports mm. drone strikes. We pay tax dollars to go kill people in the you Middle East all the bodies, time. Though. As long as we don't see the <laughs> you face. Don't see them bodies. It ain't a murder. Mm. That's what it is. Now, I don't want to feel, I don't want to make anybody who's listening to this because uh, this podcast feel uncomfortable about having abortion. Sometimes it's the most kind thing that you can do for a child. Do your thing. I mean, do your fucking thing. I got three kids in heaven. God bless them. Shout out to, we got three? Three. Golly. <laughs> you out here serial killing, hey, motherfucker. God bless them. Those Damn. women made, those women Jeffrey made choices. Dahmer over here. Those women made choices. Mm -hmm. And I didn't disagree with what, the choices. What, to not hop off the dick? To not, no, to not have the baby. Damn, bro. They made choices to not have the baby. Just what pop her off, bro. I didn't, I didn't call, I didn't tell these girls. Was this oh, back you, when you were fucking fat girls and you couldn't just pop them off? Nah, this was early on in my life when I was just having sex. And you were just nutting in girls. Man, I didn't know no better. <laughs> I didn't know no yeah, better, Yeah, you man. do. Listen, man. You my just pull, pull your dick out. But you know, you, the, the pull-out method is something that is mastered as you grow older. No, it's not. Yeah, it is, man. No, you just pull when you it young, out. When you're young now, when you're young, you feel that little tickling. A little done it out by the time you pull back. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does, man. isn't real. How many, how many girls you had pregnant before? None. Really? Yeah, but I got a veiny left testicle, so that could affect my sperm. <laughs> no, for real, that could affect my sperm, yo. Listen, I got a short torso and a veiny left testicle. Who trying to get married? <laughs> no, but that could affect the temperature of my sperm and make it not so you can't get pregnant. I might have to get a surgery to get that fixed. Oh, I had a, but for the time, pe time being, I'm not getting girls pregnant. When I was younger, I had a few girls, you know, pregnant, and they decided yeah. to have abortions. Why? Because at the time, they were young, yeah. and their parents weren't having it. And that's cool. I'm supportive of abortion a thousand percent. I'm not pro-choice. I don't like that. I'm, I'm literally pro-choice. It pro makes society better. And guess that what? Being do, said, and by the way, do I think yeah. abortion is murder? In the technical sense, absolutely it is murder. Here's the thing. I don't. Un this is what I'm trying to understand here when it comes to abortion. I have yet to hear a good argument for why it, why abortion is not murder, not uh, ethically wrong. I have yet to hear a good argument. I've tried to look, I scour the internet for them. I'm nah, supportive of, of them. Nah, rape, rape. If you get raped by somebody, that's a, that's an ethically good reason to have an abortion. If somebody rapes you, why? Because they raped you. I'm supportive of that, but yeah. that, okay. I'm not having a baby by a rapist. How no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Real quick, real quick. The fact that the baby was put there by the rapist and the fact that you're getting rid of the baby are two different things, right? So baby put by rapist, super wrong. Now baby's in there. We have to end baby's life, correct? 
Listen, man. Yes or no? No, the bottom line is it's a woman's choice, man. It's her body. Why? What she does with her body is her, her body choice. just happened. No, here, here, here's Didn't the they argument. Did that in Girls this season? There Have y'all watched Good Times? There was, yeah. You remember <sighs> when Penny's mama used to beat the shit out of Penny? And I'm using this example because there's, there's a lot of people that can relate to this. Yeah. You know why she was beating the shit out of Penny? Why? Because she didn't like Penny. She didn't like the fact that her fucking man left her. Right. So every time she saw Penny, she resented it and thought Penny was the reason why she left that her. the man left. Right. So if you got motherfuckers who had kids with people that they love and they hate the kids, yeah. imagine having a baby by a rapist. Dude. Matt, what, if the, what if, God forbid, Charlamagne. the guy, the, you have a son that looks like the man that I know you constantly you. have to look at the rapist. I'm supportive of abortion. Listen, I'm supportive of abortion if the person rapes you. I'm supportive yeah. of abortion if that person is the love of your life. I'm supportive of abortion if you're bored and you just want to get an abortion. Whatever you, you want to do. Fuck, listen, it's about to be summertime. I ain't got time to have a baby. Listen, if you got a vacation planned Absolutely. and you don't want to be three months pregnant hey, so that man. you can drink when you're in Mexico, on, man. get an abortion. Whatever you want to do, I'm supportive of it. That being said, I empathize with people. <laughs> who are against abortion and I understand their logic. People people will sit here and go, how the hell could you be against abortion? I get it. There's something growing inside you. You're stopping it from growing. I understand how people think that you're terminating a let, life. Let, I okay, get well, that let, logic. Let, let, let's talk about nuance with those people. Those same people, do you kill bugs? If you was to hit a goddamn dog in the road and the dog died, would you stop the car and whatever? Like, do how you, much do, do you, you care about meat? life? I eat, yeah, do you eat meat? Like, yeah, how much do you care about life? Okay, I eat meat. I don't eat babies. You eat baby cows. You I eat, eat baby you animals, eat baby not baby animals. humans. But I'm just saying, how much do you care about life? Like, that's what I want to know. How much do you care about life? I don't care about animal life. I care about human life. Do you hate abortion but support the death penalty? Yeah, a baby hasn't killed anybody. But st but it's still alive. Why not just put him in jail forever? Well, that's what adoption is. What do you mean? When you give a baby <laughs> up for adoption, I'm talking about the death penalty. I'm talking about the death penalty. Why not just put him in jail forever? Like, I, it's, just, it's a lot of nuance that goes with with this whole conversation. No, because you have to understand, if somebody has done a crime that we deem worthy of murder, right, and or the death penalty, and we're supportive of it, that's fine. This baby, this this almost baby hasn't committed any crime yet. Yeah. This almost baby hasn't done anything yet. And if we allow it to keep living, it will turn into a human being. So that is completely innocent of crime. I'm, I'm right or wrong here. There's a very simple answer to this. Yes, please. If you think abortion is murder, by all means, don't get an abortion. If you think it's something that's right for you in your situation, then do it. And to tie this whole thing full circle, the problem is, you have a lot of older white men essentially Ugh, pass, it's true though no it's not you have religious law, folks well but the people in power essentially what i described and they're passing these laws and forcing people to make that decision for them it's an individual choice i've told y'all that before though the reason i could never be conservative because conservatives give a fuck too much about what other people are no doing. i don't give a fuck about people's personal choices i don't give a fuck who you fucking right i don't give a fuck no, about you have, about having conservatives abortions care less about it you're the opposite liberals are the ones that care about what people do conservatives care less about it they're, they're well, just like what, you, what, 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 what? guys con Come the on. whole idea of conservatism is small government we don't want the government in our business the what you do in your home you do in your things. home the idea of of uh, liberalism is big government. Government dictates what you can and can't do because they would argue that they don't believe that you can be maybe an ethical human being without government interference. So why are people mad at Tommy? Why are conservatives mad at Tommy for saying she's pro-choice then? Because conservatives, deep in their heart, do believe that by terminating a baby, you are you know, killing somebody and they don't believe that killing is right because they have so their religious once again, views. the reason I could never be a conservative is because I don't care that much about uh, what people do with their bodies. Like, it's none of my business. Like that's how I, that's how I truly. But you understand how their their point of view is my point. Yeah. I, Chris, I, I, can I, you give me an argument f uh, for for abortion? Why it's not termination of something? Sure. My argument for why abortion should be legal is it falls into like one of these categories. Not legal. I, I want an argument for why it's not termination. <coughs> By the way, abortion is legal. Okay, but what else, look, this is my argument. But uh, can I just ask you for a specific thing and everybody avoids well, this well, because they can't give one. I don't, well, I don't understand one. what you're asking. Okay, I'll ask you again. Yeah. Right? The arg I want an argument for why yes. abortion isn't considered the termination of a life. I thought it is. I thought that's the main reason conservatives don't want it. Want of abortions. course, but liberals will say it's not a life until it comes out of the vagina, or it's not a life until six months, or it's not a life until. Days. 
So, I mean, technically it is, but the, the reality of the, of the matter is women have been trying to get abortions since literally the beginning of time. You can go back to ancient Egypt and Cleopatra, you know, had all these tricks that she did. They would give you special potions. And I think the most important thing is if, if you really care about life, <laughs> avoiding and, the no, 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 no. this is, I'm, I'm coming to it what? right now. The fact of the matter is women have literally had to seek out ways to terminate pregnancies since the beginning of time. And unfortunately, what happens is when it's not legal and it's not safe and there's not Planned Parenthood, a lot of those women end up dying because they're forced to go underground. They're forced to take fucking potions. They're forced to use coat hangers. They're forced to do all this stuff. So if you really care about the life so much, why are you going to force millions of women into this dangerous situation? I don't even know what we're talking about right now. Chris, I just know Chris, that, that makes perfect sense. I just think sense. it's delusional to act like when you okay. have an abortion, you're not killing something. So here's the thing. Like, I thought that's the whole point of an abortion. So here's the thing. <laughs> like, here's the thing. Like, yeah, like, but you have to understand, nobody <laughs> wants to believe that they're killing something, so it's ridiculous. easier for them to stomach the idea I think of, the best example you just gave was the drone strikes. It's a drone strike. It's like, like drone strikes sound good, but you know what drone strikes are? You're killing people. Yeah, and guess right. what? I'm okay with it. It's bad. like if we were to see a bunch of so fetuses. You just got to drone strike your fetus and we'll drone strike some terrorists. Nah, no, he started by saying, he said peace to my three, you know, like, he's not trying to say that's I'm not, not the yeah, case. I'm not arguing with him. him I'm just, and my, him are on the same page. This, I just think of this... I just believe. I think I simply the, believe in pro choice. Like, that's the simplest decision. Yeah, because it's convenient. I believe in pro choice because I'm selfish. I might need an abortion one day. I might need a scoop scoop, so I want to have that. I might get a girl pregnant. I don't want pregnant, and I might want to do it. So I believe in that for a second. But I understand it's completely selfish. I understand in no way am I concerned about that life that I'm terminating. I'm not even considering it a life. Now, I think what people on the left do, liberals do, is they create these scenarios where it's not a kid yet. Because they feel guilty about the idea that they're terminating it. So they'll make these scenarios like, oh, the baby's only, you know, three inches long. Okay, so at four inches, is it a baby? When do we consider something a baby? At five inches? Or they'll say, there's no heartbeat. I think okay, this is a, another so, void argument. I just think Okay, that so there's no heartbeat at, at until 18 days. Okay, does does that mean that when somebody is uh, loses their heartbeat on a on a hospital bed, does that mean that we don't try this, to at least bring a, the heart back? This is a null and void argument. Abortion is taking a life. You either agree with it. I wish we had a with. real liberal here that 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 could make the argument for not because they they would they would disagree with you. They'd say they disagree that what abortion is not a life. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So what are you killing? They don't believe it's <laughs> like, killing. Like, they don't. They think like, a life. You, I don't understand why you're making that face. They like, think a life killing? starts when the baby comes out of the vagina. There are I there think, are uh, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and and many liberals were arguing that you should be allowed to do abortions up to nine months. No way, Jose. They they were arguing. That's crazy. Nine months. Now here's the no, thing. Now here's crazy. now here's why I say this is crazy. crazy. And this is a big problem. This is gonna be a big problem for Democrats. I've been looking this shit up, right? So right now, J.R. Smith, I think, had a child, right? Yeah. Five months premature. Yeah. Right. Yep. There will be a time. <clears throat> there's an art liberal argument which is, once a baby is able to survive, without the mother. That's when we consider it a baby. And I think that that can happen at like five months or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's why if you can go like places like Birmingham or uh, Tuscaloosa, you can go there and get fucking, I don't know about now, but you can get abortions up to like six months. I think it's called late stage or something. Like okay, so, so but what they're trying to say is you shouldn't be able to have an abortion after the date where a baby can survive without the mother, right? Now, to me, my response to that is, a baby can't survive without a mother or father until he's like 13 years old. Like babies I constantly. About, right? I think because you're not listening, bro. I, that's why I don't want to have not, this conversation this with you because you're not ready Schultz. to listen. Schultz wants to argue, and I'm not even arguing with no, him. No, because you don't know. Care. What he's you just don't right. know about. You don't know enough I don't about care. both arguments. Why do you care? Are you ever gonna have an abortion? Are you gonna have a baby? Maybe if he gets that testicle fixed. Maybe <laughs> I'm right. Like, like, well, you think I care about like, everything you bring up? But I fucking make an effort to care. That's what we do on this show. I don't care about half the shit. I'm not gonna get into a deep argument about abortions. You either agree with him or you don't. I'm pro choice. If you want to have ladies, if you're out there pregnant right now and you think about having an abortion, do you? If you think about having a baby, do you? Why do people care so much? Like this is a mute argument. Like it's so much other shit mute. that gov it's so much other shit that people in positions of power could be discussing. Like why are we okay. on the floor talking about this shit? So here's my argument. So here's my question for you. If it's killing, why aren't you in jail? I don't <laughs> what? You just said it's killing. You, you said it's killing too. You said you've killed three people. You why said it's killing too. Why aren't too. you in jail? But Schultz, do you think it's killing? I'm asking you a question. We're not talking about me. 
Why aren't abortion's you? Illegal. I haven't killed anybody. That's We're why not I'm in jail, jail because abortion's illegal. But why aren't you in jail? Because abortion's illegal. Why are they legal if it's killing? I don't know. Oh, now we're into a discussion, aren't we? No. So that, no, we're not. no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't let him off the hook with this, There's Chris. No don't fucking let him off the no hook with this. Stop no protecting him. So this Stop no protecting him. Shit. Stop, oh, Stop protecting him. Oh, you get defensive now. This is why the podcast has been shit the past few months. Because Andrew just likes to argue. Andrew is a contrarian for no reason. He can't help it. Andrew gets off on being a contrarian. Like, I don't give a shit. I told you I agree. I get off on showing both sides to an issue. I get off on showing consistency. I get off on showing Do you I, hear that? I agree show. with you what do we agree on he said if you I agree with you baby, I'm baby. asking you a question you're avoiding the question because you don't have an answer for it no and you don't want to be put like in a situation a where it doesn't want to answer don't like you you're no defensive no, right now you're attacking me because you don't have an answer and you don't want to look stupid I agree stupid. with you. You're, you you're afraid of looking like you don't know what's the answer to this question, ask me the question again. ask me the question again if you think that it is killing okay why aren't you in jail I don't know now explain it to me <laughs> Me personally, mm -hmm. me personally, I haven't killed somebody, so I wouldn't be in jail. But I think it is an interesting conundrum. Answer the question, Andrew. Answer. I, you, I asked you to explain to me. I want to know why what do you, you want to think. Know? Uh, now, now he wants to know. He asked the question, but he wants to know what I want to well, know. Well, what do you want to know? I want what to, to know, know from me? Yeah. why you think abortions aren't considered killing. Why aren't people in jail for abortions? That's what I want to know. I think that we all, on some level, put our selfishness over life. And we all know on some level we are stopping a life, but we care about our lives and living our lives and the ability to live our lives more. So since nobody has seen this baby, since we don't know what the baby looks like, since this baby's still a fetus, we've had this group discussion where we go, hey, why don't we just not go to jail for doing this thing that we would consider killing? Because if that baby was nine months and one day and outside the vagina and you killed it, you would be in prison. You would be a heartless piece of shit. When it's four months and it's inside the belly, Eh, you just, you made a mistake. You nutted. And yeah, your little yeah. sperm slipped and, out. And, 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 so right. my, so my, my, and abortion's illegal. But my thing is, what does that got to do with anything? My point is, that, my point is there are certain like, people... Why did you ask that question is what I want to know. Because I want people to understand what the other side feels. I care about both sides, and I think that both sides make certain so, points. I agree I don't want to live you. in a vacuum. I can totally understand why some people consider it murder. I started the conversation by saying abortions are murder. So if To you, argue otherwise is kind of ridiculous. So if you don't think it's murder, then why aren't you in jail? It's a perfectly reasonable question. You just, you just don't want to answer, answer it? it. You're just attacking me personally. <laughs> what are you talking? Yeah, Nobody's like, attacking you. you are. I agree with your dumb ass. This is, listen. Dumb ass. Andrew. <laughs> Dumb no, no, because honestly, you sound stupid right now. This is the reason. Because I'm asking a this very is, reasonable question. But you, you don't, you don't even answer. Real, but you don't even really have an answer for it. Of course I don't. It's a very difficult thing. I gave the best. <laughs> what the fuck? How can you ask a question you don't have an answer for? I gave so the, what's the answer? I then? gave the best answer I could, which was which was we make a selfish decision not to go to jail for ourselves. We don't want to go to jail, so we decide it's not there. Andrew, the it's answer, not illegal. The, the, honestly, the answer to your question is why don't people go to jail for abortions? Because abortion is legal. Maybe the better question is, why is abortion legal? Maybe that's the better question. Why is abortion legal sure. if it's murder? Maybe that's the better sure. question. Sure. Why is abortion legal if it's murder? Yes, this is what I'm trying to get at. So what's the point? At, well, what do you think? Andrew, you're a contrarian. You like to argue Charlemagne, for no you're reason. avoiding a discussion that you don't have an answer for because you don't want to there look silly. There is no answer to it. What is the it, answer to this discussion? Right. We don't like, need an right answer. Right now, people are listening to this podcast saying, what are they talking about? Because there's no answer to this discussion. Charlemagne. Charlemagne. I'm pro-choice. Charlemagne, I know you're pro-choice. You can't just say things that are true that have nothing to do with the discussion. Of course you're pro-choice. We want to know how you deal with it. We want to know how you stomach it. We want to know how you, how you handle those emotions that go along how with it. How do I that's, handle that's, them? That's a better question. How do I handle That's what emotions? emotions? If you what? feel something is killing right. and you've admitted to killing three things, how do you deal with that the emotion? The same way I deal with killing bugs. The same way I deal with driving down the road and hitting a deer or hitting a dog and killing it. It's really, to us, we look at that as lesser life, right? Yeah. So something that is in your womb that's two weeks or three weeks old, we don't look at it as a life. We're not thinking about it. It's like it's almost like you're just not dealing with it. Out of sight, out of mind. Right. I never saw it. I don't know it. I don't have any emotional attachment to it. Mm -hmm. Boom, that's it. And guess what? If the woman, especially the woman, mm -hmm. if the woman is cool with it, why am I stressing? Simple as that. When the, when girls would call me and say, "Look, so, I'm pregnant," yep, I would say, "Damn." I would say, "So what do you sure. want to do?" Sure, not me because it, it really don't have nothing to do with me. Sure. What do you want to do? Sure. And they would say, "I can't have your baby." 
ain't no why. I don't have no, I'm not asking any more follow-up questions. Yep. All right, so, you know, this is what I think you need to do. Go to the doctor, make sure it's what, what, and we'll so take care of it. So, here's my question. When I, when, 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 when I was young, it wasn't even no choice. It was the parents calling, you got my child oh, pregnant. Sure. Yaddy yelling at me, screaming. I sure. didn't even know what happened sure. after that. They, there wasn't no, we're going to, it wasn't even, we're going to go get an abortion. Sure. It was just yelling and screaming, you got my child pregnant, put your parents on the phone, hey, your son got my child pregnant, sure. like fucking is a crime. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure. supposed to get in trouble for getting your child pregnant. Yeah. And then that would be it. I would hear nothing of it. There wasn't even a Great. question. Great. So like, that's it. Great. Now, do you have empathy for uh, some young parents who ha- get pregnant by accident, have the baby, and then put it in a dumpster? Absolutely. What are you talking about? Do you have do you, do you think that they're more wrong than you? Yes. Why? Because it's a real live breathing baby in your hand, as opposed to something that's two, so three weeks pregnant. Once the baby touches the fresh air, it becomes a baby. Like that's what I'm trying to understand. Well, maybe, maybe you're missing the point because you said Democrats feel like they can have abortions up to eight nine months. If conservatives are against that, absolutely. Then call me a conservative because I'm against that too. That's cruel and so unusual. So when punishment. is okay for you? I guess when it's a baby, when it's a you can first of all you can only have abortions up to what three weeks? No. Three, or is it the first trimester? First trimester. No, no, it's not six months. It's, it's six not supposed months. to be six it's months. Six months. Well, whatever. I don't fucking know. I just think that's a stupid. I just think this whole conversation is dumb. No, you think it's dumb because you're not equipped to handle a very difficult. Well, it shows by your okay. Well, by your logic, since I'm not equipped to handle a difficult conversation, Shit. blowing you blowing your brains out should be legal. No, I I would argue the opposite, right? I would right. argue I would argue it should be just as illegal as essentially blowing the the fetus's brains. Oh, out. yeah, blowing your brains out should be illegal. I mean, it should be fine. No, no, should be illegal, just like blowing the baby's brains out should be illegal. No, you. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you agree with abortion or not? I personally am for abortion, but I understand that it is selfish, and that's why I said the drone strike thing. I'm for drone strikes, but it's incredibly selfish that be one terrorist. Uh, Tara's entire family has to die at a wedding. Uh, the family who is incredibly innocent also has to die because we got to take care of that terrorist. Now, this baby, you could argue, is innocent. You could I make that argument. Saying, I think you, we're having a pointless. Choice, I don't even you, know what this conversation wanna, is about. You, you just want to hear some regret. You want to hear? No, I don't. I I want to know how people stomach it. Like I, you said stomach to me, stomach what? You said I told you very basically. You said to me, I think this is killing. So I go, no, it, let's you it is killing. It. There's no think about it. Okay, so I want to know how you cope with that when you. So when something is a, oh, let me ask you a question. So when something is alive, yeah, it's a hard decision. If a bug walks in here right now, we're, we agree on this. And I step on it. Yeah, is it dead? Yeah, we agree on this. So to sit around and anybody thinks abortion, I'm not stepping on babies' heads. It don't matter. You're still killing it. You're killing something that was once alive. But I would never do it. if a baby was crawling. On the floor, I, with, I wouldn't I did, be. Like, I, 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 I try it. to deal with technical dif- uh, definitions of something. I'm not sitting here trying to about what I think or what my feelings are. Get, fuck all that. If you have an abortion, mm-hmm. you're killing something. Sure. So Period. my my point is, at what age do you think it's okay? It's it's okay. It's not okay to kill. How many I think, months? You know what I think belly? a better comparison to this would be. You know how when uh people get old, mm-hmm. or they get real sick and they want to die. Yeah. I think that's a better comparison. Yeah, but they're making abortions. they're making the decision to die, not the baby. It's not the baby's inside going. The baby, the baby's What's my life going to be like? The baby's not old. The baby's not old enough to make decisions. Okay, the baby's not old enough to make decisions. Even at nine months, the baby's not old enough to make decisions. When the baby comes out the womb, it's not old enough to make decisions. And technically, until it's eighteen, it's not old exactly. enough. Exactly, so but it's still what, killing so something if it's twelve. This is a pointless conversation, and you can keep saying this that is I a, don't have an argument for it. I, it's nothing to argue. This is just like, a discussion. I'm not even against you right now. This is what it's, you're a natural we're not contrarian. Each and other. This is why it shows, Charlamagne, tell- you're just throwing out the contrarian oh, argument because you have nothing to say. This is a very difficult discussion. Okay, Abortion it's is difficult. To, all right, no, let's, let's time to have this. We discussion. can move on. We well, can move we're on. We're gonna move on to why the brilliantness podcast has gone to shit in some people's eyes. Okay, let's have this conversation. Sure, let's do it. Do you think you're a contrarian in any way, shape, or form? I think that uh, absolutely. Do you think that is productive to having healthy conversations? I think without it, there is no conversation. We just spent 20... That's not true, Sean. Without it, it's a vacuum. No, you can just be honest with yourself and you can be willing to change your opinion about things. Like I am. I told told somebody about Tommy this week. I said it on the radio. Mm -hmm. I don't like when people call somebody a flip-flopper because she may have just have grown and evolved and changed her views. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. The problem is, we've sat here for 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm not even against you. I'm not saying there's, you no, are. there's nothing you said that I've really even disputed. I agreed with you on your drone strike thing. I just simply said I'm pro choice, but you keep trying to dig up an argument. And I'm like, why? Because I'm curious 
I mean, do you want to know? What? I will tell you if you'd like to know. Okay. I'm curious to know when you think it's okay to kill something. You That's have yet to give me an answer. I've been asking you the same question for the last 20 minutes. You've been That's avoiding it. That's not what you asked you've me, though. You've been doing personal attacks, and you've been getting defensive. Post. That's not the question even Schultz asked me. Even now you're not Schultz answering. Schultz asked me, why do I think abortions aren't considered murder, and why you don't go to jail for abortion? So, or do we want to discuss why the podcast you think some people feel has gone to shit, or do we want to discuss Okay, this? I'm going to give you another perfect example. Why don't we just stay on one I'm going to give you an example. When you had Angela Rye in here, and you said to Angela Rye, um... Mm-hmm. Um, proved to me that your ancestors were raped by slaves. What the fuck that got to do with anything? <laughs> proved like, to, proved like, to me that That's like telling a Jewish person, proved to me your ancestors were... Raped by white people. Were, ...were killed in the Holocaust. Or proved to me if you're a Native American that you was, you know, your people actually got smallpox. Like, what did that even mean? That's not even a question that could be answered. She was saying that she was white, part white. I She's wanted, not part white. She didn't say that. Well, that's what she did say, actually. That's exactly what she was saying. And she was no. saying that she was part white. She said she, she said she found out that she had a slave, that she found out that she had a, uh, she's tied back to a slave named Maria. She also said like that, that there was white in her family. And then her argument for why there was white in her family was because uh, a lot of white slave masters raped their slaves and then had children with them. That was her argument yep. as to why it was. So I said, how do you know that that's where this whiteness comes from? How do you know that there's not, you know, consensual relationships in, with white people in your family's history? There could be consensual relationships from other countries. That's not what you asked her. You said, prove to me that your ancestors were raped by slaves. I don't know if I exactly that's said exactly, that. Is Chris, is that not what he said? And you know the reason I know that? I don't know so, if that's exactly so, the gist of it. I, I don't know people, if that's exactly the I, I have so many people hit me about that, and people that we know call me and be like, what, what does that even mean? Like, literally, and this is the thing, and I'm, I'm being honest with you because you my dude, and I yeah, fuck with you sure. 360%. Sure. This is not something new. This is something that has been going on for the past few, four months, and motherfuckers have been hitting me saying, what is wrong with Andrew? Sure. And I'm like, Andrew's a natural contrarian. But I think it's. Im- I'm just telling you, sometimes that shit would does you not like, make for productive would conversation you like to at know, all. Would you like to know why I take these stances? Go ahead. I take these stances because I think it's important to understand both sides of an argument. I don't think there's anything productive about you and I coming in here and arguing the exact same side of the same coin. I think it's important that we make an effort, especially now more than ever, where I see America so polarized. I see the world so polarized and people living in a vacuum and they're only seeing the the fee, uh, the Facebook post that the Facebook decides that they like. And they're only seeing the Instagram post that Instagram decides they like. And they're only reading the articles and news sources that they like. I think it's important that we show them both sides of of a story well, well, and and let me just make, yeah. make the point both sides of the story and both sides of an issue and how both sides could be logical and that was what I was attempting to do with this abortion conversation is showcase that yes absolutely I support abortion a thousand percent but there are people who don't support abortion well, a thousand percent let me just finish this Andrew and they're not do. and they're you, not assholes for that they're not they're not stupid for that we often shame them for being stupid when they disagree so do I know that I get hate because of this? Absolutely. No, no. This do is I what know you need that to do. opportunities get taken away from me because of this? Yes. But what's what more important? There's been opportunities, but look, but there's freedom is freedom so of this speech. Is what you is need expensive. to do: learn to have your opinion mm-hmm. and express your opinion, mm-hmm. and you can express both sides. You can express what you've heard from expre- conservatives. Mm-hmm. You can express what you've heard from libertarians. But don't argue with motherfucking me because I'm not even against you. But here's what Not I, once have I been against you. But here's the so thing. That's when it sounds stupid. Like but, you can state your opinion mm-hmm. and show both sides by based off what you think without arguing with motherfuckers. When you listen back to this episode, you will see that I did exactly that. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. You went crazy. I think something's wrong with Andrew. I think Andrew's on when medication. You, I, I understand what Andrew's saying, but I think to pull the, the camera back Another, you'll see I did exactly that sky view. I never, and you'll also see that I never disagreed with you And but, but what you think we're doing is having an argument I'm just curious as to how you rationalize something and I'm just so asking it's you the difference between we're asking not a arguing. question and then saying you don't even have a motherfucking answer to it I'm like I don't have an answer because I don't care like we're not arguing but like, that's my reaction it's to one thing to have asking a curious getting question getting defensive and being ins- and, and kind of like being borderline like throwing jabs at me when I'm just curious about your worldview and you always like to do this dumb shit where you, you, you say some salacious shit you say some contrarian shit you admit to being a contrarian and then act like the person that you're talking to is the crazy one like I'm throwing jabs at you but you were. I didn't say anything personally insulting about you. I, I didn't, didn't call you names you. or anything I like that. I specifically screamed at you, I agree, I agree, and you just was like, but agree on what? We're not agreeing. It's not anything, it's, 
I'm asking you about your life. It's like me going, okay, so what was it like going to school in you Munsport, South wrong, Carolina? Evan? And of course, well, there's times. Are you willing I'm to wrong. admit that you're wrong? Absolutely, Evan. there's times. When's I'm the wrong. last time you admitted you were wrong? Um, on this show, I'm trying to think. Uh, I, I admitted I was wrong recently on the on the show, and I and when? I came back the next week. It was I had something. Oh, uh, it, uh, it was a. Uh, it was the rap thing where you hit me up, and the next week I was like, I was so off about that. Uh, it was when I was in California. Remember, um, I tweeted something crazy, and then I and then. No, 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 no. The Migos. No, 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 no. I tweeted something. Oh, the crazy. Remy Ma and Nicki thing. Was it Remy Ma? Yeah, yeah, I was so off on the Remy Ma and Nicki thing, and I the first thing I did when we when we had the conversation, I said, "Listen, Charlamagne hit me up. He explained the situation. I and I jumped off too fast, and I did it." But you do realize you're not always right about anything. Those are just your views and your opinions. Are you comfortable with that? Are you comfortable knowing that you may not always be right? Absolutely, Charlamagne. My goal with this show so often is to prove or is to showcase that there are multiple opinions that have rightness to them. Like these people who are against abortion have rightness to them. These people that are pro like you and I have rightness to us. Well, that's, and that's fine. But, but, but truthfully, that should be the secondary goal. The first goal for this show, <coughs> just be fucking funny and have fun because that's what people come for. I'm not a fucking comedian. Yeah. I, tell, I, I don't, I, I, tell, I don't tell jokes, I tell the truth. Yeah. But Chris, we and you need now is the time to tell Andrew everything that we be saying all the time when he's not around since we're having this intervention. I, thought, I understand what Andrew's saying, but I think the point is you got to disengage at a certain point. If Charlemagne is not picking up on what you're saying or if someone Yeah, I agree. That, we can la we let can go. we can stay too keep, long keep on the topic. That 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 abortion topic, I mean we're doing like on it on show prep on the air right now, but like no, but that this is good. It's that fine. Was a, nah, this is a listen, good discussion. These it's people have made the brilliant yeah, yeah. podcast popular no, over the past I, couple I years. We shouldn't. They've like shown concerns, so we need to have the conversation. And it's important that they that they see what's going on. And but don't keep trying to hit the same point. Listen, a million I don't even know what the point times. is. I'm not against them. I understand them. what you're saying. <laughs> but you think the war again? It's not even an argument. Like how come when you said the drone strike thing, and I go, "Yeah, absolutely right." I agree with you. Yeah. So I don't even know how we took a turn. But to I, even now, I think what there's a miscommunication in terms of what I want from you. It's you so know. What do you want from me? I I just want clarity in terms, or maybe you haven't thought about it yet, and you don't know what, when how it comes you feel to what? about it. But it was just when do you think it should be okay to have an abortion? When when does when does a baby when is a baby abortable? Well, I don't want to get into it because <laughs> that's a whole other question. I think he told you you just don't like his answer. Exactly, and no. that's what I told you earlier, Schultz. You will say Charlemagne's being PC or whatever simply because you don't like my answer. Just I told you what I feel, and that's no, what I like and, and you need to start being comfortable with you and what you say. I, I that's am it. because comfortable I'm comfortable with what, what I'm say. saying. Like I'm not saying things because I'm PC. I'm saying things because this is truly how I Charmin, feel in that moment. Charmin, I get a lot of flack from from certain people from for what I say. I'm comfortable defending what I say, and I'm comfortable backing what I say. I'm not, and I'm not saying that you're not <coughs> also comfortable with what you say. And a lot of times we completely agree, and a lot of times we disagree, and that's important with this show. And you also need to realize, and I've heard you say this before. I, I never forget it. You said it one time. We was taping on Common Sense a while back. You was like, you like when people are arguing with each other. That don't make for good conversation. Wait, wait, explain the context of that discussion. There was right? no context. I, you specifically said mm -hmm. you think it's better when people are going back and forth with each other. That's not true. I do. I do think that it's... Well, I won't... That's not true. I think discussion is important. I think Dis disagreeing discussion. is important. Discussion. Because it shows us how we really feel about a topic. But guess what? If we don't disagree, that's fine, too. Do you? If you ever watch, if you ever watch ESPN First Take, sure. which I do, or you watch, you know, Skip and Shannon Sharp on Fox, sure. they're not always disagreeing. They're just giving their opinions. Does that worry you? Like, if you guys are on the same page too much, no. it's just going to become no, kind of boring. It's no. nothing wrong with not that. at all. I think. Listen, there's a lot of things we completely agree on, and those episodes are really great too. I think. I think. Me, I think what you think sounds good doesn't sound good, my brother. That's, that's just the truth to the matter. That's sure. And and like people, yelling and screaming and no, I don't think that sounds good. Going talking in circles, like that's not like we can well, express ideas. Again, you're saying that that's what I think sounds good. That's not. And if you are interested, so why does it constantly? If you're interested, happen? I'll tell you what it, I think sounds good. So why does it constantly happen? Why do we constantly argue about things? No, not me. You argue with everybody. Sure. Including me, you argue yeah. with. There's not. There's not been somebody on this show sure. that's come on that you haven't really argued. Well, with. it's because we have one angle of people come on the show. That's not true. When we when we have when we have people who are I think are more diverse thinkers, I don't argue with them. When Malcolm Gladwell was on the show, I didn't argue with him because or I think he's a very diverse or, thinker. Or maybe you're afraid of his intellect. No, 
I just I think he's a very diverse and I think he's a very sophisticated thinker and he doesn't have an agenda with his thinking and those people that come on and have an agenda with their thinking I don't when Killer Mike was on the show I didn't argue with him at all well, I was maybe you're afraid of his intellect no I, I don't I don't fear intellect at all I'm actually inspired by it I'm I'm like I'm wrapped up in it when people are so why so if, so if that's the case you should respect everyone's intellect even if you feel like they have an agenda because everybody has an agenda you have an agenda your agenda is to come in here and try to give both sides of the argument. That's an agenda, so sure, absolutely. So you should respect. I just think that's a consistent and fair agenda. Agendas are a part of life. I think it's a consistent and fair agenda. Malcolm Gladwell has an agenda, whether you believe it or not. Absolutely, I, and everybody I just, has an agenda. I I feel when there's an agenda that is uh, rooted in something disingenuous, I and inconsistency. But who are you? To, who are you? Can I finish to tell somebody what they believe Can I just is finish disingenuous? What I was because people will say the same thing about you. Can I, I'm just telling you shows, and I've been communicating much longer than you, my brother. I've been on this, these platforms expressing myself mm -hmm. much longer than you, and. I tell you things because I feel like you could be really great, mm -hmm. but you have to learn to properly communicate and give people the same respect that you want back. Like, why point at somebody and say you think they're disingenuous? Just hear them out. Because I think they're disingenuous. Okay, so when people do that to you, be prepared to handle it. They do it to me all the time. All right, just you do it right here. Be, be prepared You've to done handle it. it. You've done it. And I think I've handled it pretty well today. This, The last 15 minutes of this discussion is you saying you're a contrarian, you don't believe what you think, this, that, the other. And I'm sitting here and I'm going... I, I never I, said you don't believe what you think. I would hope that you believe what you think. One of the reasons I still do this podcast with you mm -hmm. is because I believe that you actually believe the things that you think. Sure. I can respect anybody as long as that's who they truly are. Yeah. What did I tell you about Tommy Lauren? I told Tommy, you know what, Tommy? If this is who you really are, then I fuck with it. I respect your freedom of speech. Yeah. If you're just somebody who's saying things for clicks yeah. and hits, there's no value in shock. Eventually, that's going to crash and burn, and I don't want to be on that sure. motherfucking plane. We saw it with guys like Milo. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, how Tommy's going to end up. Mm -hmm. You see it with motherfuckers like Richard Spencer. All yeah. of these people that are just throwing down. You can go back to, oh, back in the day, people like Star from Star and Buck sure. Wild, Miss Jones. Motherfuckers who just say shit for shock value, mm -hmm. that shit crashes and burns. The people who truly last are those that are authentic. Mm-hmm honest and aren't afraid to get new information and even change their mind at times. Absolutely. Like, I'm not trying to press my ideals on nobody. Like, I'll get on the radio, I'll get on the podcast, I'll say what I need to say. If you disagree, we can have some debate about it, but I'm not... You stupid, or, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, or whatever. Like You said that 10 times this episode. Because you really did sound stupid, because you are So don't, me. don't say that you're I, not going to do no, something no, 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 no. just go on your fucking soapbox you know and why, act like you, you're better Do you know that. why I called you stupid? I didn't call you stupid for what you were saying, I called you stupid for how you were acting. It's still calling someone stupid. Because, because you're acting stupid. No, it's not. I'm acting Too in a way. I'm asking you questions that you don't want to answer. I'm not arguing with Who you. Who do you want to answer? Or, or I gave you, you just weren't willing to answer. But it, look, it's fine. I, when you listen back to this episode, I want you to pay close do attention you listen back to, to yourself, what you're telling ever? me. Do you listen of back course to yourself? I do. No, I do. Don't. Every, go, every if do. If you listen back to yourself and you haven't tried to make no improvements, then something's wrong. Absolutely. I have listened back to myself. Matter of fact, to be honest with you, listening back to myself really helped my self esteem with it. Oh, because you really feel like you're saying some shit and everybody else is stupid. Not everybody else, because that's the thing. You're only getting one side of the interactions. I can't tell you how many interactions I get from people who are saying, hey, man, stay true <laughs> to what you're doing. You're Hold offering out. different perspective, all this kind of stuff. Sure. Like you so, said, so a certain you. amount of, like you always say, a certain amount of people, people like agree it. with you. Three people are not going to like it. Sure. Four people are not going to give a fuck about it. But sure. let me tell you something about those motherfuckers. They can make you delusional. I'm going to tell you what my daddy used to always tell me. Sure. You're that's why I don't good. put two stock in on any of them. never as good as they say you are, and you're never as bad as they say you are. You are. Absolutely. But I think you should take all things into consideration. Absolutely. Being that I'm somebody that I think I think I believe we're friends. I consider you my friend. Absolutely. I think you should listen to your friend. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And Chris is Chris ain't saying shit, but we have these conversations all the sure. time. Sure. Well, let me let me say something. No, Chris, because you, if you ain't gonna tell the truth, there's no I'm need for you to tell talk. the truth. Because I think the truth there's two sides to it. I think it comes down to having a conversation versus a debate. I think if you're mental, there there are certain people out there who want to debate you. No mm -hmm. doubt. I think most people come on this conversation, this podcast, <coughs> to have a conversation. And if you turn the conversation, every conversation into a debate, I think that's where you're going to lose people. And I think that's where you've been losing people. So I think you got to figure out, as I understand, you're trying to show both sides. You're trying to say, this is why I might not agree with a lot of people who are very passionately against abortion. There's value to that. I'm not saying there's not value to that. Mm -hmm. But you have to figure out, this is an opportunity for a debate. And this is a conversation. And there's a way to get that information across in a conversational matter uh -huh. versus like 
you know, it's like it's being you, on and, trial. And, 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 it's like you, the last you, episode, and, and, you were like holding the shit up. Tell me about GMOs. Well, I don't know. And by the way, if every, if a lot, we're not on trial. If a lot of people are telling you the same thing over and over, mm-hmm. Andrew Schultz is exhausting. Whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like you shouldn't just dismiss it. You should be like, wow. Well, what do you do when you get those comments? You get those comments a lot. Yeah, I take them into consideration. But and you I try don't to change. Make, I try to. Yes, I do. What are you talking about? You've changed who you are when people constantly no, talk I try about to, you I try, to, I try to look outside myself and see how can I improve on that. Sure. Just like when they came at me about that women of color shit. I didn't just dismiss them and be like, oh, fuck them. They don't know what they talk about. I mm-hmm. thought about it. I'm like, damn, did I communicate that the wrong way? And you know what I, can't, you know what I, you know what I learned mm-hmm. from that situation? Because if you're not learning from that, if you're not learning anything from any of this shit, Schultz, it's mm-hmm. pointless. What I learned from it is some things just shouldn't be communicated on Twitter. Some I agree things just shouldn't be communicated on social media, I've especially that, somebody yeah. like me. I have yeah. a radio show. I have a, a podcast. Yeah. I got a TV show. I would rather, I, I can do viral videos. I would rather say it and explain exactly how I feel yeah. than just for you to be able to take these 140 characters out of context. So that's what I learned from that situation. Totally. When, 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 when women have been telling me, oh, Charlemagne, you're too hard on women, or I don't like the way you talk about women, I don't just dismiss it. I'm like, Damn, let me see, you know, what am I saying? What am I saying that people are are getting things misconstrued? Or what am I saying that makes people feel Mm. like I'm being offensive? Mm -hmm. I don't think you're capable of stepping outside yourself and actually really dealing with yourself shows. The mirror works two ways. You should Mm -hmm. be able to look in the mirror and see everything that's wrong with you. You should be looking in the mirror and see everything that's right with you. Why do you feel that way? What you mean? Well, why do you feel the way that you feel? You just said you don't think I'm capable of stepping outside but I don't think myself. You are, I don't think you even think you're doing anything wrong. What makes you feel that way? Because your behavior, your actions. Because my actions. Because if you're changed. telling me that you, you're telling me that you have listened to yourself. Yeah. And you haven't made any changes, then you're letting me know that. Well, no. What I'm telling you is, you're I've not listened, paying attention. To yourself. I've I've listened to myself, and there are certain things that I have changed. I think that. What have you changed? Um. I think that there's certain things like we addressed uh, yesterday. What I'm, what I often do is when I disagree with somebody, I discredit them. And a lot of people don't know what I do in my personal life, but it, you know, communication is important to me. So what I try to do is I find ways where I can communicate better. So when I disagree with somebody, a lot of times what I'll do is immediately just cut them off and discredit them. True. And, uh, it's a bad, and it was especially something that, that I picked up after listening back to the Angela Rye episodes. And it's a poor communication tactic I've learned because what it does is it shifts the debate from the argument at hand to a battle of ego, right? So instead of listening to her point and going and doing what I usually do on this episode, which is you have an interesting perspective and I see how people could think that and I want to offer you this other perspective to consider – when you cut someone off and dismiss them, they go, well, fuck this person. I'm going to prove this person wrong. So the last time Angela and I were here, it, during the episode, we had this kind of heated exchange that really wasn't about the issue. It was about, was Andrew Schultz right or is Angela right? And it that, should be about the issue. Your argument, it should be about the issue. I'm glad you recognize that. Can I, can I finish without you, yes, you can. trying to pile on when I'm being honest about something like that? Though. I'm glad. This is so, real. So um, in an effort, because communication is the most important to me, in an effort to communicate better, what I've what I've realized in the last couple of weeks is when somebody says something, even if I disagree immediately, find some kind of core value that I could empathize with in that statement. And then let them know that I'm not discrediting their entire opinion. <coughs> and then responding with with my own, right? Which is what I was doing, what I at least attempted to do during our abortion argument, which is, hey, I agree with you and I would make the same decision you made in those three situations. But what I'm also asking you is, what do you think, you know, or when do you think a life is allowed to be taken? Now, I think there was some miscommunication in, in how, in what you wanted from me. I think you thought I was trying to debate you or argue with you. I was just really interested in your- you did. Well, I think- you we, when you listen back. If we listen back, maybe we'll have different opinions. But, but again, I'm always looking for better ways that I can communicate this at the other. But in terms of my opinion and how I believe about something and how I feel about something, I don't come on this show just with some frivolous, oh, I'm going to throw it out there shit. Like the people that listen to this show are important to me, whether they disagree with me or they don't. And it is important to me that they get information that I think is somewhat vetted and somewhat real. And sometimes I get so passionate about them not hearing fake things or how about them not being influenced by fake things that I can kind of cut you off. Like I cut you off last time about the taxes thing because I was upset because I was like, here, here, I felt you were villainizing these people. I was. And and, and I felt like you weren't in the position to villainize them because 
in a lot of ways, you were doing something similar to them. So I thought it was hypocritical. So, so in that knee jerk reaction, did I did I react poorly and not communicate as well as I could have? Yes. But does it come from this place of man? We got a quarter million people listening to this shit, and they mean a lot to me, and they've changed my my life in a lot of ways, and I want them to get information that I think is the most truthful, even if I'm giving both sides of it. Well, it's simple. You should start listening with the intent. To understand and not reply all the time, because you hate when people do exactly what yeah, you. That's you true. hate what people. That's, that's you hate when sure. people do that to you. What yeah. you said you hate. What you said you hate you do to other people. You hate you're, when people do that. Hundred percent right. Your, your your favorite line is no. Let me finish. Let me finish. You're let me finish. Right, yeah. Like let the person talk. You're hundred percent right. Then you talk. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I respect the fact that you want to kind find common ground in what somebody says, but you don't even have to do that. All you have to do is just actually listen to what the person said and then reply. That's it. And that's a conversation versus a that's, debate. That's basically. it. I, I, I personally enjoy debate. It gets me excited to debate. I'm, I'm, I know, I've but that's come the from thing a sports like, background. I like, debate, I, like I like debating when it makes sense. I don't or like when debating. You have someone who wants to debate you. You know what was, was really unfortunate is that after the second Angela Rye episode, Angela and I had this really interesting discussion when we were in the office that was off Angela said she's never doing a podcast again. Yeah, a lot of people ask for her to, to never do it again. Actually. No, that's not true. <laughs> people is, want her to do her own is, podcast. It is. It, and I'm sure. And, and, and honestly, people were hitting me. I mean, I, I can show you literally hundreds of tweets, yeah. Yeah. texts. Sure. Don't ever have Angela on the podcast with Andrew. Sure. That's beneath yeah. her. I, yeah, I and, and the reason they said it was beneath her is sure. because they felt like you weren't even respecting her enough to have a conversation. Sure, sure, sure. And I totally understand that. And, and I think that makes sense. And I think that. Uh, but the, what I was basically trying to say was, is that we had this really good discussion afterwards, and it was just about like legalization of drugs. Let me just get you the did. point out, Charlemagne. It was a legalization of drugs, and and it was like, wow, this is, and I, and it, that's where it hit me. It was like, wow, we could have had this, we could have had this Eric Holder Attorney General discussion on the same with the same level, the same listening, the same kind of care and concern, and and I took responsibility for that. I was like, man, I fucked up with that. I I should have. I should have been more empathetic and I should have been more concerned with her opinion and then may, and respected her opinion more off the bat. And she would have maybe respected mine when I put that olive branch out first. And I have a responsibility as a host of this show to do that to a guest, to make them feel uh, comfortable and willing. And it was one of those things that it really, and this is before any comments or any SoundCloud comments or Twitter comments. This is right after the actual episode. Mm -hmm. I'm not reacting to Twitter or fucking Instagram. I mm -hmm. don't care about that shit. Okay. I believe in what the fuck I say. So that's unwavering. What, what, what bothered me is, man, we could have got good information at, out to these people who listen every single week. And I was responsible for them not getting good information out. I got to sit with that. And I really feel every like, week I got to sit with and that. I feel like if you I and, fuck up. I feel like you and Andrew had a better conversation. I mean, you and Angela had a better conversation after the podcast was over. That's what I'm referring to. Because it was less of an audience. Oh, dude, I feel so like much. you know that people are watching and you're the one with the ego who thinks somebody's checking you. You're Marty McFly, bro. If you think somebody calling you chicken, you go crazy. But like, it's, it's, but it's for no reason. People respect you. I fuck with you. You're my guy. Mm -hmm. If I didn't respect you, I wouldn't say, you know what, we need to get Andrew to do the podcast two years ago. If I didn't respect mm -hmm. you, I wouldn't be like, your show's where you at and I fuck you, my friend. Mm -hmm. You was at my fucking wedding. So mm -hmm. I respect you. Mm -hmm. So what I'm telling you is you have to stop thinking that people think you're an idiot, people think you're chicken, people think you're pussy. Like, you have to check the But ego. I don't think that people think any of those things about me. Well, you think people are, ch are trying you. No, I think that when it's less of an audience, you're more, you're more, you're more capable of having a conversation. I, yeah, I think when in you general, know it's a bunch of people listening, like on this podcast, yeah. or it's people around, like a lot of people around. Sure, you're you're all right, Andy. I think I think both of us. I think that doesn't help. Also, when you add into that kind of hysteria, but I put up with it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think it. I, I don't mean, the reason it, I add it, I add into it because that's my technique. My technique when somebody is coming at me is I just fuck it. I'm just, I am whatever you say I am. I'm Eminem. I think it protects you. I think it protects you because it distances yourself from me. And I think that so you. So what about it. when I be like Charlemagne who hates black women? I say jump again? on there and say that. You know the first thing I and maybe this is a problem of mine. I'll be honest with you because I'm the type of person like with the, with the with the revolt TV shit. Right. Mm -hmm. When I read that shit yesterday, I laughed. I said what I said. First thing I did when I got on the radio this morning was say, welcome to the Breakfast Club, the home of black privilege and reverse racism. And I said, from I said, I, I, I was like, um, I was saying crack ass, cracker. Like, I'll, I'll start acting like whatever it is you're accusing me of. Sure, you owned it. I could be wrong. I could be dead wrong for that. Sure. Maybe I should take the opposite approach, but that's just the way I deal with things. Like, if you are stupid enough to believe this is what I really am about, 
I'm going to give it to you. To me, that's satire. I could be wrong about that, though. That could, that could be a flaw of mine. Sure. Uh, no, I think it's a great way of handling it. I just think I have to be a little bit more cautious than you can. But you're my friend. So if you're my friend, you you understand you're not just wearing this. No, no, but... Motherfuckers is coming at me like, I know. dump Schultz. Of Get course. rid of Schultz. Of How could course. you be friends with a white supremacist? Sure. Yada, 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 this and that. I'm like, that's my guy. All right, Andy. I think, I think to be honest... Um, I, I don't think you may be getting <clears throat> enough credit for huh. my I don't think my opinions are intolerant in any way, shape or form. I think that they're positioned to be in, intolerant by people who are searching for victimization. But I think that you don't get enough credit for tolerating people's perceived anger at me because I know you because you know me. But at the same time, regardless if you know me or not. You you still put up with it. You still get shit. People are going to message you and say, how could he have this opinion on this? How could he have that opinion on that? Absolutely. Now, to a much lesser extent, do I get these tweets and emails about you? Absolutely. I have people, you know, saying on the opposite end, blah, 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 Charlemagne this, or is, he's being, you know, soft about stupid. this. Or, Charlemagne doesn't listen. Yeah, 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 whatever. Exactly, exactly. Now, I know you, and I believe in you, and that's, uh, that doesn't affect me, un but I understand that it's a different relationship as a black dude when you are in some way looking to support this white guy with these views that f because people aren't <coughs> intelligent and people don't understand. But you can't say that. No, they, if anybody who thinks that about me is unintelligent. That's not true. I know some very intelligent people who say this about Unintelligent yourself. human beings. It's not true, man. Or, or people who aren't listening. I know some people that you the, think are intelligent who think this about you. Or people who aren't listening with the intent to understand. Or maybe and, you and could if be we saying have, some fucked up shit. And if we had a single conversation, if they had a single actual conversation with me, if these are people who actually have hung out with me and actually know who I am and they're not taking a tweet off of the fucking internet, they're not taking a meme, off, like you say, out of context off of the internet and stuff like that. If they actually hung out with me and we chilled, they would know exactly how I feel. But that's your fault. Like when you posted that shit about the Migos and Ellen, mm -hmm. everybody, our friends mm -hmm. from Van, the little mm -hmm. Duval, what the fuck wrong with Andrew? See, that's, oh God, that's funny know, because well, <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with Andrew because of the actual opinion or what the fuck's wrong with Andrew because... The opinion. Well, no, because I had Van hit me up and say the exact... He was like, no, I get what you're saying. Maybe, did, did he say, I get what you're saying and then it, f proceed to explain why you were wrong about that? Um, well, no, I still don't think I'm wrong about it. But did he explain to you why he thinks you were wrong about it? How you went about I, it the wrong I, way? I, I don't want to put words in Van's mouth because I don't remember the exact conversation. I was in L.A. I was smoking well, a lot of weed. It, 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 either, everybody's lying to me then. But if Van did that to you, I'm pretty sure Van did what you said you should do. Mm -hmm. Take some, take one thing from the situation that you mm -hmm. can agree with and then give your explanation. Then it's received better. Well, I think what I learned now... Van with... told me about you, and I, I should call Van now. Mm -hmm. He said, man, I saw Andrew show to stand up. Mm -hmm. And he said, Andrew is so motherfucking talented. Like, extremely talented. Better than... He said, you killed three comics that was on the show with you. And he said, which makes me feel like he doesn't have to resort to the antics I feel that he's doing. I, That's what he said to me. I had a great talk with Van about it, and he and he, I. I, yeah. I said, "Well, won't you call him and tell him that?" Because yeah. my thing is, don't call and tell me. Yeah. Call and tell the person you're talking about that. Tell I'm him. like that with everything. Mm -hmm. Call and tell him yep. if you care about him. Call and tell him. Sure. So he called you and said that. What he? Yeah, he called me. He basically, he was very complimentary. You know, and he was just he, really sweet. And then he said, uh, "He's like, this is my concern." He goes, Boom. "He goes, my concern is that." The things that that you could say on the show would inhibit people from seeing your stand-up, which I saw. And then, I mean, I don't want to say the thing that he said, but it was like, you know, what where he put me up with the comics that he put me up there with was, you know, it was it was incredibly uh, gracious compliment. Um, you know, and I'll be honest with you, in my heart, I believe that about myself. You know what I mean? I believe there's only a handful of people in the world that could do what I do on stage. I, I agree. So, I think you're incredible on stage. Now, and, and, it, and it really touched me, and it was like, it was like, wow, people could not, because what I do on the podcast isn't the A material. I save all the A material. to I don't put material on the podcast. We just have conversation. Mm -hmm. My material is on stage, you know what I mean? But it's like, and, he's, and he made me think, he go, I go, fuck, man, I could be inhibiting people from seeing me at my best, like from seeing what I do best in this yeah. world just because of opinions I have on a podcast. And, and on Twitter. And on Twitter, you don't want to get lumped I've in. I've changed Twitter. You don't want to get lumped in with the Richard Spences and Milo's and bro, Thomas. I've changed bro. Twitter. I've changed on Twitter because, like you said, <coughs> it, there's no context to it. None. 
on the podcast, at least I could talk it out. And, and yes, there's going to be a certain amount of people that just because just because I have this certain opinion are going to hate me because they're taught to hate a certain opinion without thinking about it. And But then there's going to be a certain amount of people who go, oh, okay, I disagree with him, but I understand that opinion. Story of my life, bro. There we go. Totally Story understand. of my life. So I've stopped that on Twitter. I've stopped doing shit that, like, that can be taken out of context on Twitter or Instagram because it's just not fair. That being said... I'm not going to change opinions that I've that I've researched and feel strongly about and really truly feel like it will help people. I know a lot of times people will disagree about me, me about certain things in the world, but you have to understand <coughs> I've thought about this a lot and in my heart I feel like it will truly help people more if we do this. Listen, you and if have, I'm wrong, I, I'm, I'm not, wrong. I'm not telling you, I'm not knocking you for your opinion. I'm knocking you for knocking everybody else's opinion. That's Some it. opinions are bad. That's an opinion. No, but like, <laughs> I'm just saying Germans want to kill all the Jews. That's a bad opinion. I'm going to knock that. No, when that's I, hear, more, I don't think that's an opinion. That's like, that's morally wrong. Like, killing all the Jews, you that's can't That's what do an that. opinion is. It's uh, like, look, people have opinions on things and we knock them. I have opinions on things and the, the bad opinions, the bad ideas in the world, you have to stop. The only weapon we have against bad ideas is our voice. OK, once you silence us, once you silence our ability to take away bad ideas and we start silencing our ability to critique things, we have no weapon against bad ideas like freedom of speech. You do realize bad ideas don't grow, right? Bad ideas are a cancer, but they don't grow. They grow. I tell, no, they they grow. I tell they people, grow. Listen, watch. Like, look, look at look at the people slavery we're started about. out as an idea and other people started talking about it. It didn't grow. This it grew around the world. Yeah, but it's the not triangle, like eventually, eventually, the triangle slave and trade, and eventually it came to an end. Just like all. Why bad did it come to an end? Do. Why did it come to an end? Because somebody else had an idea that it was wrong. It, it is wrong. Well, of course it's wrong. But <laughs> but they spread that idea that it's wrong. They spread that idea it's wrong, and more and more people start to realize, holy shit, this is wrong. And let's keep spreading that idea. We want good ideas to be just as cancerous as bad ideas. You're right. But let's not even go use that extreme because people will lose the whole point of the conversation. Sure, sure, sure. Because sure. you fair, 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 fair. That's All right. Hold on one second. Let's pause this and get back to the exorcism of all right, Andy. Uh, support for this week's episode of Brilliant Idiots. Is it going to be that? I don't know if it's going to be that. It might be early. It might be early. Support for this week's episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Stamps.com. Okay, you can get everything on demand these days, like this podcast. You listen when you want, when it's convenient for you. So why are you still going to the post office and dealing with their limited hours when you can get postage on demand with Stamps.com? Anything you can do at the post office, you can do right now. From your desk with Stamps.com. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package using your own computer and printer. And unlike the post office, Stamps.com never closes, okay? So you can get postage whenever you need it. It's 24-7, all right? Going to the post office is brutal. Yes, maybe the customer service could be a little bit better. There's some very nice ladies at the one that I go to over at 11th Street and uh, 4th Avenue. I think very, very, very beautiful and interesting and supportive. But there's a long fucking line and everybody messes up their packages. Point is, right now you could use our code IDIOTS for this special offer, a four-week trial, including postage and a digital scale. A digital scale, okay? I'm not telling you what to do with that. You do with that what you want. I'm not judging you, okay? Just don't wait. Go to stamps.com and before you do anything else... Click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in idiots. That's stamps.com and enter code idiots. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Let's keep it at the Milo's, the Tommy's, the Richard Spences. Yes. Anybody that does shit with shock value. Sure. All that shit crashes. Charlemagne the God. I don't do shock value. You no have value shock. shock. No. I want to suck a fart out your ass is not normal t- fucking dinner talk. But I've sucked farts out of asses. Okay. Like... Doesn't mean it's like, not shocking. Like, like, like put it like this. You know, you know, you know why I started saying I'll suck a fart out your butt. Why is that? Because remember that old saying I used to drink your bath water. Yeah, that's really disgusting if you think. Wait, like, you I, sucked a fart out of someone's ass. Yes. Who? My wife. She farted and you sucked it God out with your man, mouth. You never been back to eating that pussy and that shit queef and you like. Ooh. That's not a fart. It's a pussy fart. Like, what's up? No fart out. Saying, I ass. drink. I you drink. saying it for shock value. Which no, is I'm fine. not. It's like it's like yeah, I'm, uh, I try to use. I try to take older things and like imp- and, and update them slang wise, right? True. So drink your bath water. It's some nasty shit. Suck a fart out of the butt. It's some nasty sure, shit. And it's, it's, but it's just showing how beautiful uh, this person absolutely. is. Absolutely. And it's meant to be funny and shocking. I'm not going to no, say I'll, 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 you look so good, I'll suck your daddy's dick. That's just too far. Well, that's just for Biggie. That's yeah, just yeah, too far. Yeah, and Richard okay. Pryor. Fair enough. I, I, look, I think that shock is important. I think it's important and it's when funny. When it's truth. 
See, Howard Stern is the king who they call a shock jock, but all Howard Stern did his story was truth. tell the truth. That's why all the people around him that tried to imitate him yeah. fell off. Of course. Opie and Anthony. Because they didn't believe Bubba it. Bubba the Love Sponge. Yeah, yeah. He was doing shocking shit that wasn't real. Well, that's the thing. It's like, and I completely agree with you on that. You have to be able to back up what you say. You know, shit is shocking contextually. Truth like, is shocking. If we go to, if we go to, uh, you know, fucking Afghanistan and a girl shows her <laughs> kneecap, that's shocking. Right? She pulled her little thing up and her knees show. Oh my God, that girl is so shocking. Right? In America, you have to do a little bit more crazy stuff to be shocking. But if you truly, now, now, but if you truly believe in what you're saying, like we do, then it's shocking to you, but not for me. Bro, I say it all the time. Truth, I, whenever people interview me, it's like, this is something that I've had to think about over the past four or five years. I never thought about it before. Mm -hmm. When people started branding me a certain way and saying certain sure. things, I'm like, shock jock. Why am I a shock jock? I ain't never took nobody and put them in a cathedral and told them to fuck each other. I don't have girls in here having sex oh, eating each other's pussy on air. It justifies like, their lameness. Could I tell somebody that their album is whack? That's shocking. No, no. Could I look Kanye in his eyes and tell him that his album's whack? That's shocking. No, no, no. Like, it, but that I think when they label you as a, a, a shock jock, it's so that they themselves as radio sh show hosts are more comfortable with what they do. So it's like in comedy, the way I would relate it to is, oh, you're a dirty comic. You're a filthy comic. And it's their way <coughs> of justifying your success and their lack thereof. Oh, if I wanted to say suck a fart out of someone, then I'd be just as successful as Charlamagne. That's the reason why he's successful because mm -hmm. he's so shocking. I could do that too, but I'm a good Christian and I would never do or whatever, yada, yada, yada. People need justifications for their lack of success. And in this situation, they'll say, you're shocking. That's why you're successful. I think intelligent people will look at you and they'll go, no, success is not about him being shocking at all. It's probably about uh, truthfulness into what he's saying and a genuineness in what he's saying. I like the term superior intellect. I like the term often controversial. I'm cool with that. Sure. Like, because guess what? Everybody's not going to agree with your opinions, and I'm fine with that. And who knows? I might say some shit that's dead regular to me that mm -hmm. people do consider shocking. But whatever. I'm not purposely approaching the mic trying to say things to shock people. Yeah, because that's corny. And that's how you get in trouble. Do you get, that's that, when the bullshit comes. Bro, that's we always talk about it. It's like, believe in what you say. Back up what you say. Like, motherfuckers is like, how do you continue to grow? And how come this doesn't affect you? And it's because I'm not saying anything that's crazy. I'm really not. I'm just giving my honest opinions on shit, period. Yeah. Like, and I'm not against people. I listen to all sides. I can understand why this person feels that way. I'm, I'm for good, period. Evil shit, I don't fuck with. If it seems evil to me, I'm not fucking with it. Mm -hmm. I talk about it. I talk out about this administration because this administration just seems evil to mm -hmm. me. This isn't regular conservative shit that we've been dealing with for years. Yeah. Not in my eyes, sure. anyway. So I speak out about it. If that's shocking to people or controversial... So be it. I'm just telling you. I don't think I, that's what they think is shocking. I think sucking a fart out of someone's butt is shocking. Well, that's that's trivial to me then. I, 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 guess, like, I get it, but it's like, okay. And I don't even really say that anymore because I'm married with kids. But you can't no. say it. Don't let these people call you something and label you something and no, make them not, stop no, you from you're saying right, it. But I don't want to say like it. People say, oh, fucking all right, Andy, to me uh, on Twitter, but that's not going to stop me from having an opinion that, first I'm of all, you. would never be all right because I've openly criticized the all right <coughs> movement and Richard Spencer and all these fucking douchebags I openly criticize. That being said, if I agree with a, a conservative policy, one thing does not mean that I'm okay with all conservative policies. But I might agree with one thing, and absolutely. I'm, and I'm with you. And, and when I when, when I make the decision to say stop sucking the fart out of his butt, because it don't feel right to me anymore. There you go. That's genuine. Like, I'll never become a caricature of myself. And that's, that's like, to me, that's how I'm putting the button on the whole conversation and the button on the podcast. Mm -hmm. I just don't want you to become a caricature of yourself. Cause, absolutely. Because you're better than that. <laughs> and that's just the truth yep, that matters. Sure. You're smarter than that. You're funnier than that. You don't have to say things just to shock people or to get a rise out of people. You don't have to have debate just for something to be entertaining. I don't think I, well, I, I'm entertained by it. I like debating people. I like I, that. That is joy. Like when, when Tariq was coming here and you told me it, at like fucking 1130 the night before I was up till, you know, four in the morning, listen to his interviews and like really kind of putting together talking points. And, and That's I was excited though. by it. I, I was really excited. He's by a debater. Y'all wanted to have right. a debate. I think what I get caught up in, I think when it comes unproductive, and this is something that I've noticed about myself, this is not, this is something I'm wanting to change 
and um, I wasn't effective at doing it today, but it's something I want to, is when the debate stops going anywhere, like what happened with our abortion conversation. Disengage. Regar- yeah, exactly. Regardless if <clears throat> if I've gotten where I want to go with it or that person has gotten where they want to go with it, to just know that it's stuck in the mud and right. be like, and that's where let go of my ego and let go of that maybe insecurity of being misunderstood or not getting my point across to just let go of it and go, all right, well, let's just move on and have another discussion. Because the, lis- the listener loses. Because the listener, the yeah, exactly. And speaking of the loser. And that's, and that's my insecurity about not being understood or not being um, put out in the right light. And I got to stomach that shit and go, no, dude, you're good enough. You're a good enough like a person. And, and you're just, you're yeah. right. Both of y'all are right. And speaking of the listener, the information has already been dispensed. You say what you they need can to say make their and decision. let the person to come yes. to their own decision. Yes. Right. Like, you're not going to change anybody's yes. mind. Like, yes. it's out there. Continue the conversation later. Maybe the next podcast. Yep. Or somebody tweets you, you can tweet them directly or whatever. Just, it's, it's gone. Yeah. It's done. Yeah, that's the thing. There's no rules to this. We can always come back to things when we have new Absolutely. opinions. Et cetera. And there are no wins. We've been talking about rape no, for two years. I think you're looking for a win. <laughs> like, we've been talking yeah. about rape no, for two yeah. years. There is no win either. I think it's a... Um, yeah, it's a, it's an ego thing. It's something I'm aware of, and I try to, and I have been, and I have been trying to to get better at it because ultimately I want this to be the biggest podcast in the world. That's what means the most to me. And by the way, there's gonna be people that listen to this, and they're like, you know what? I fuck with Schultz again. Sure. Because Hopefully. you're being honest. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is not this is not a character right now. Yeah, yeah. This is Schultz being 100 percent real, stripped down. We have these two friends having a real conversation yeah. about each other. That's how I've always lived my life. That's how I've always chosen to do radio because it's the easiest thing in the world. When you wake up in the morning and whatever's on your mind, I can't do it no other way. Like mm-hmm. they was calling me yesterday, telling me not to talk about this revolt shit. I'm like, there's no, there's no way. I told our radio, there's no way in hell sure. I am not talking about this. These sure. motherfuckers are out here slandering my character, slandering my name, and straight up lying on me. And I'm sure. just going to let that ride. Whether or not I can change people's opinions or not, it don't matter. Just, At least I got my shit out. And also, you're like you said earlier, you're giving them the information. And letting them make their own, make decisions. Their own decisions. Now you got two. I think that's where I think that's where I will hopefully evolve into, which is instead of like trying to make you feel a certain way, Feeling good just cooking the dinner. That's like it, I can't force you to eat it. <coughs> but no, if I, you, you, you don't, don't care what people think about it. You did the best you could do. Yeah, yeah. I did the you best I did best making meal. the meal. Whether you like it or not, that's not on you. You might not even eat it. Food for thought. Let them do their own but dishes. If and I'm food for thought, let them do their own dishes. Let them do their own dishes. Food for thought. Let them do their own dishes. Yeah, true. I think that that way. will be that will be. I think the next evolution. You know, hopefully for me and and. And yeah, I'm glad that you guys brought it up, to be honest with you. I, I just like genuine, honest conversations. You know, I mean, I've, I've always liked that. And I'm not afraid of other people's opinions. I'm not really afraid of people liking me or disliking me. That's that's not, I've learned that that doesn't give you any value in this world. If you're addicted to people liking you and, and approving of what you do, then you'll be a, for lack of a better word, slave to their likes and approval. And, and, I need to be I need to be an independent thinker. And I value truth more than anything. And I literally will pay money for this truth. I know that sometimes it costs me money to, to have my opinions and give these opinions to these people on this podcast in terms of opportunity. I know that. And I'm willing to pay that so that they can have these thoughts, whether they like them or fucking dislike them. It, it really is important to me to give these things to these people. Me too. Man. I want I know, people to learn. And you do it all. People don't realize, but like there are certain opportunities that you probably missed out because you you care about truth and you I'm care about giving these shit, people so I don't truth. Know. Say I'm, what? I'm naive to that shit. I'm the guy but that you know says I'm, I'm the guy that says I never experienced overt racism. So no, I'm, but you, <laughs> not like that. But there, I'm sure there's somebody's like ah, I don't know if we can have Charlamagne do this. He might say something oh, crazy. And absolutely. and and that is the cost. <clears throat> Freedom of speech ain't free. It's very expensive. Mm-hmm. And but understand that like while. I can always get better at communicating these thoughts and like understanding what, like you said, when to disengage and that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's coming from a place of, man, I want to give the people this truth, man, because Absolutely. some okay. people might be misinformed. Or, yeah, or, but I just want to give them all of point, it. Yeah, please, now that we're please. It out there, please. I, one oh, thing, now you want to tell the truth, Chris? Since Chris finally wants to be honest. Go ahead, Chris. All right, yeah. So the, the, point, <laughs> the point I was going to say is I think you are trying to shine light and truth, but I think where you've gotten off track is I think you've kind of become obsessed with revealing the hypocrisies of what you consider to be liberals. And I, if I, if I can do like a psychological 
breakdown on you. I think sure. you're disappointed in liberals right now because uh, of what all happened. All of us are. Liberals are disappointed in liberals. Right. I think, but I, I think you're making an interesting point. Go. Because this, uh, this is what I feel. I feel you're disappointed in what you perceive to be liberals and you've decided to really go after them. I think in your heart of heart, you think you're helping them by going after them. But I think you've really decided you're going to show all these lefties what their flaws are. And my whole thing is now's not the time to be doing that. Mm. We have, I mean, I, you know, like if you can talk. I don't know if I agree with that, Chris. Well, I don't think there's anything but wrong. I think his, right, I like, think his if, argument, if, though, is that. Is, this is what I'm saying. It's now not the time because. <clears throat> you, I don't think or I or spread that. it around because I'm like, if you really want to show the hypocrisy of some people. Do it to everybody. I want to hear about Wall Street guys. I want to hear about corporate guys. I don't want to just hear about like rappers and identity, social justice warriors. And yeah, I told, like, I, I told you that a few weeks. Like ago. the left. Yeah, we're, we got flaws. It's not perfect. There's mm-hmm. hypocrisy, but like to keep beating that drum, right? When all this other shit is going on, that's what concerns me. And I told you that a few weeks ago. I said people hear that and they think that, and you're, then that's where you get all right. Yeah, all righty. People think you're only against liberals. You're only against things that are black. Well, yada, I think, yada yada yada. I think. Well, first of all, I've never been against anything that's black I, I make this point over and over again it's misconstrued and conflated um but uh but I think I think what what a lot of times happens in, in this situation is that you know we have one type of guest that comes onto the show and um but these are your tweets though yeah but right now we're talking about the I'm show I'm talking about the show we have, in general I'm just talking about things that we have general. we have one type of guest that comes onto the show we have often a very left leaning liberal guest and when we have a more central guest like a Malcolm Gladwell I tend to agree with him very uh, much and then when we talk about right wing people when we talk about the Tommy Lawrence and we talk about the Richard Spencers I destroy them and expose their hypocrisy and expose how awful they are uh, yes as somebody who's a lifelong liberal I'm embarrassed to see what liberals have become I don't relate to it like I used to I I was proud to be liberal, proud to be progressive, and always on the forefront my entire life of tolerance and understanding. And I think it's important to extend that tolerance and understanding to opinions that you might not essentially agree with. That's but the only it, way we grow, baby. Exactly. But at least try to understand why a conservative might feel that way about taxes or try to understand why a conservative might feel that way about abortion or religion and these types of things. Because I think that's what liberals do. I think at deep down... Tolerance is what brings people in. Like, America has been tolerant of other cultures. I mean, obviously, we have tons of racism and systemic oppression, but we've been tolerant of other cultures in terms of letting them into this country and letting them uh, foster and grow. Like, that's the idea of America. You right. know, my mom's an immigrant. Like, immigrants come here. Yeah, so- but the, the hypocrisy being presented from the other side is so much more dangerous. Chris, and- I'm going to be honest with you. You just ruined the whole conversation. You derailed everything. You just- <laughs> I don't, no, I don't I'm know bringing what you're it back. Bringing- <laughs> but my point is, that's how you get alt-right Andy. If all we hear is you beating up on the left and you're not applying any of that logic and that breakdown to the right. Now, what I'm- that's a good and point. If we and discussed, that's, that's what if I'm we saying. Had that's the- a good point. Like, I wanted, I, I, I told you guys, I got, I got in touch with Richard Spencer. I wanted to bring him on the show and I wanted to destroy him. Yep. I wanted to debate him. And why did I tell I you that you shouldn't do I wanted to annihilate him. Now, you both said no. I, I emailed the guy. He was down to come on. You guys said no. Well, what did I tell you why? I will, I'll say, you said you don't want to create a platform for these ideas. And I said that you mm-hmm. should focus on yourself. Because let me tell you something, Andrew. This, I'm, I'm, I don't really have much to, much to say. They've been wanting me to have these conversations with you for months. They're like, oh, I'll do an intervention with Andrew and have us call in. And I'm like, that's not real. I'm not staging something. If sure. y'all think my guy really has a problem, sure. if y'all are really concerned about my guy, one day it's going to be a genuine conversation. Yeah. And I've been texting you or we'll talk and I'll tell you little things. Sure. I told you about Richard Spencer. Andrew, you need to work on yourself first. Sure. Before you destroy Richard Spencer, mm-hmm. you need to destroy this alt-right Andy character or whatever that people think you are. Mm-hmm. Like, worry about your perception. The thing that you wanted to do with Richard Spencer, you did the you did the exact opposite with somebody like Angela. Somebody like Angela is your your chance to show that you aren't attacking all liberals or you aren't attacking all women. You have the ability to sit down and have a conversation with a liberal. Destroying Richard Spencer ain't shit, but but showing doing what Chris just said, showing that you're not always attacking the liberals and the left. You had the opportunity to do that, and you ended up kind of attacking the liberals and the left, and you put a cherry on what everybody been saying about you the past you're couple. A hundred percent right. So, I guess my my feeling with Spencer was that it would provide some 
balance, it would go, oh, shit. <coughs> He just doesn't like these extreme beliefs on both sides. He's very centered because when I go on Fox News, they think I'm this diehard liberal lefty. I believe that. Like literally when I told them I was just on Fox News last week and I wore the brilliant idiot ski mask the whole episode. But uh, when I was on there, um, I even said that. And I was like, it's funny because, you know, I get positioned as this like right wing guy on my podcast, you know, and then they go, you right wing. What are you talking? Like they couldn't even fathom that I'm this right wing guy. And it's in my heart. What that says to me is I'm, I am very centered. Like the extreme left, I disagree with. The extreme right, I disagree with. I guess I want to show the podcast listeners, I want to give them a, a taste of what it's like when I destroy an extreme right guy. And I wanted to and I, and I wanted to take this motherfucker down and I wanted to like hang him in the public square. Bro. But I understood, and it took me a day, and you guys said, you guys said, I don't think that we should give him a platform for these ideas. And at first I didn't like it, and I felt like you guys were kind of against me, and, and, and I felt like we only have one type of guest on the show, and it doesn't, and it, it it positions to me to, to look like this guy who's intolerant. And then after a day, I go, you know what? They're making a good point. Why would we provide a platform for this guy's hate? Even if we are ripping them apart, it's not worth the 50 people that might listen to him and actually go, hey, maybe this guy does have uh, a R is not worth, God forbid, you sitting here having a conversation with him, and he may say something you agree with. <laughs> and then you like, you know what? You got a point. And then motherfuckers take that one no, little right. part. Because you right. can't help but be, you know. They the, take that one part to reinforce everything they yeah. are, always feel about you. I just felt like I needed, I, I felt like I but definitely that's, that's needed something like that. going for the win again. You don't need the, you don't you don't you wanted the W. You don't need the W. I did want the W. You don't I, need I, the W. And, and, I, and, I did, and I'm glad that you guys had the foresight to, to not to not expose that. I guess we just have to find a balance where it's like, if my natural feeling is to shun the extreme versions of both sides, but we're only bringing on the extreme version of the left, I have to find a way. Just say it. No. Explain it. Explain it. All. Listen, man, I'm sorry to say yes, it is a lot of stupid motherfuckers out here. And you do yeah. have to hold their hand and explain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right now, you see it all the time. It'll be Charlemagne's and Uncle Tom. Then it'll be a white person saying Charlemagne's racist. Yeah. How the fuck could I be a racist to a white person yeah, yeah. but an Uncle Tom to black people? You yeah. know why? Simply because I'm not caught in a bubble. Yes, we're having a conversation about Donald Trump. I don't like Trump. But I damn sure want to know how the fuck he pays less taxes. Sure. What the fuck is wrong with that? Sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Oh, uh, you being a coon. Why are you defending Steve Harvey? First of all, Steve Harvey's my guy, and it's not even a defense needed. Steve Harvey told y'all that y'all need to respect the position of the president. Yeah. Not respect Donald Trump. Right. Respect that position. Right. You can't threaten the fucking president, you stupid motherfucker. Right. Just because you want less taxes doesn't mean you believe in grabbing pussies. Exactly. And I think that's where shit gets conflated. And even for me as well, just because I might believe in this one, uh, uh, support this one conservative thing, or like just because I think that we might need more police to keep the kids safe in Chicago, doesn't mean that I'm supportive of systemic oppression and, and police shooting black people at, at all. So, uh, yes, things get conflated. I think this was a really cool talk. I, I, I think it was a great I conversation. I think it's cool, yeah. Um, I'm I glad we got is, it out. I think this is a conversation everybody wanted. And like I told y'all, Van... Chris, it was going to genuinely happen when it was supposed to happen. Because I've been telling Andrew little things here and there, blah, blah, sure. blah. But I knew that eventually we was going to have to have have the full conversation. And it was going to come from a real place. I'm not going to force it. Let's do yeah. the intervention of Andrew Schultz. No, no. And, and I it, think what the, what's, what's interesting about this intervention is like, I prefer it to come from people who know me. It's like, at least what I'm understanding about this is you guys are coming from hey, this position of, hey, you're being misunderstood. Like, you, you, you guys know who I am. People you're are getting a version of you that isn't you. You're being misunderstood and yeah. you're scaring us a little because I don't know if you're really <laughs> fucking crazy. Like, what the fuck is this? Something wrong? Is something wrong? Everybody seems concerned. There's something really yeah, yeah. wrong with Andrew. No, like, I need fuck? better PR. It's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, but it's like, no, it's like Muslims and shit with the terrorists. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like people thinking all these Muslims are terrorists. It's like, fucking no, they're not terrorists at all. But you got a couple of these Muslims that are making it Absolutely. bad for everybody. So I need to make sure that my my uh, terroristic views don't overshadow Absolutely. my uh, religion of peace. And, and what you did with this podcast is what you wanted to do with Richard Spencer. Ooh. You wanted to show that's interesting another side of yourself and show that you aren't this guy. Right. And they know you're not. They've said, this is not. This is a, they've watched the change. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. this isn't a, this isn't like you started like this. 
They've watched the change. Mm-hmm. And we all, listen, man, all of us have gone through changes over the past 18 months. America just went to a totally different place. We all know that. Everybody went through something. Everybody's dealing with different emotions. We're dealing with different emotions now with mm-hmm. the Trump administration. America, I have never seen America this polarizing. I've never seen America this racist, this sexist, everything, this homophobic. Like, I don't know where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. I just know where we need to be. And where we need to be is what we're doing right now. A black person, a white person, an Asian guy, having a conversation, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah. about each other in life and communicating with yeah. each other and, get, and getting past our misunderstandings, getting sure. past the prejudgments, the stereotypes, whatever. Like, that's what we all should be doing more of. Amen. I think that's a good button to the podcast. So if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast, you think we're just... 